My goodness. Mm. We do it for them. We do. For the comic fam. For them. Oh my goodness, we got Butch, he's passed out. That's good, don't say his name. I know, as soon as we say it, all hell will break loose. It's like Candyman. Yeah, you can't say his name more than three times. Did you watch that trailer? It looks really good. I didn't watch it yet. You haven't seen it yet? I'm bad. Dude, I'm so hyped about Candyman. Looks cool. We are going to begin the show. Welcome to the Bags and Boards podcast. Man, we got a lot to discuss today, my brother. Mm, Yeah, we do. We're starting late, like always. Better late than never. Comic fam, hit the subscribe. Slap the like button. We're here to talk some expensive paper. Those are so violent. Hit the the like. Slap the subscribe. You know, there's, there's got to be a nicer way to say those. I don't think there is, Ryan. Oh my goodness. Comic fam, we're here to chat with you. Bags and boards, number 43. Can you believe it? 43 podcasts in. That's a lot of them. You know what? I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here with you, man. One of my best friends, Fire Guy Ryan. He reads a lot of comic books. I do. I comic read, Tom. Every day. It's a lot. I also, you know. Read Every day. And do all that kind of thing. And what no. we're going to do here today is we're going to chat about comics. We're going to order some comics. We're going to review some comics. We're going to talk about some spec comics. We're going to talk about conventions because mm. we know there's a lot of members who are brand new to this community. We have the proof. We have the data. We have the statistics. We got the documents. <laughs> right? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. I try. Oh my gosh. I love that. We got to clip that one out. Uh. Um, but what we're going to do <laughs> is... Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to chat. We're going to chat. So the first thing we got to talk about is that this is a live show and it's Hello. also available at, on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. We will be posting that later. The not next yet, semana. Yeah. We like to hold off, you know, but if you're joining us here on YouTube, you're in for a treat because we do giveaways on the show. That's when you can win things. You have to be here live. And we try to go live bi-weekly on Thursdays, assuming that previews comes out on time. Because it didn't this past month, which is why we're here today. Right. So, there was a weird gap. Just yeah. a poquito gap. We'll blame them. Okay. Um, but the first thing we got to talk about, this is real comic fam. We need to talk about this. And I, I mean this with do, the most respect. Do we? Yeah, we do. We're getting right into this damn show, man. Okay. Buckle up, comic fam. You're in for a fun one. Okay. So we're talking about this. <sighs> this is what happened this week. Okay. This was, was this week? This is this. This is actually not this week. What you're this looking at right here. 30 years ago. Um, something that happened uh, 29 years ago. We have Demi Moore. 30. Pregnant. Legendary photo on Vanity Fair. Now, why is this on the screen right now? Why are you looking at this right now? This is all about comic books. Don't worry. I'm going to take it there. But Ryan, I got to tell you a little story. I was hunting. I was hunting for some comics. And I oh. bought a bunch of comic books, right? I thought you meant like in the woods. <laughs> I was just going out in Montana. <laughs> Actual hunting. Looking for some deer. And comics. <laughs> comics and comics. Woods. And I was like, I get my deer and I get the comics. No, no, no. <laughs> And my Demi Moore. Come on. Um, so this is what happened. I got a collection. I got a collection of books. And this right here, can you believe, was such a popular event in 1991 that a comic company, DC Comics, Warner Brothers, decided that they need to make an homage. They need to make an homage to this Vanity Fair cover. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this to the community's attention is because I did not know this. All right? So I'm going to bring it back. This is what happened. I secured this cover, Pinky and the Brain, number 26. And I was looking at this cover going, what the heck is up with this cover? This is Pinky. And it says he ate too much cheese. And I looked at this cover and I'm like, this, this has to be something. Like, what... What is up with this? And, you know, it's actually worth How a little bit of How long ago was this? This is like last week, man. So I was surprised to find out that this is an homage to this cover on Vanity Fair. Amazing. But here's the thing. It's the, it's the only cover that homages the Vanity Fair, the, of uh, course. There's the, no other comic that plays off of the whole. Uh, apparently. I, I have no idea if there are. Maybe the comic fam knows. They can Maybe tell me in the comment section below. Maybe someone knows a different homage to this magazine well what i do know is that this pinky in the brain cover is an homage to that and what i did was on comic tom 101 on instagram i thought oh this is fun like i was hunting and i found this discovery i found this in a collection it's worth some money a lot of people probably don't know this so i went to instagram and i decided oh i'm gonna post i'm gonna post to my story these covers because i want people to see them 
to see the homage because I think it's kind of funny because we got Pinky cool. on our DC covers, right? Right. But here's the thing. I got distracted. So what I did is I posted this magazine. And then I forgot to post the homage. And then a day went by. And I'm going through my story. Because sometimes Instagram double posts your story, whatever. So Comic Fam, for our audio listeners, what we're looking at is a Vanity Fair magazine with Demi Moore. And she's pregnant. And she's luxurious. I mean, she's beautiful. It's a pregnant woman. Can't deny it. Yep. Can't deny it, right? She's glowing, as some would say. And I'm also holding a Pinky in the Brain cover with Pinky holding his huge stomach saying, I knew I shouldn't have eaten all that cheese. Erp. And he's doing the same stance. So what I did is I forgot to post the pinky in the brain cover. And for over 24 hours, my Instagram followers just thought Dom wanted to share this Vanity Fair cover for no reason. This is a magazine channel now. This is, they thought I did this for no reason. So I just want to let you know, comic fam, there was reason. I, I didn't just get excited about this cover 29 years later and wanted to share it with you. Not that I wouldn't share it. Maybe but, she is homaging Pinky in the Brain. Maybe, maybe, maybe the comic was first, and Vanity Fair was like, "Let's let's replicate this this cartoon mouse." Wayne eight two two three says Pinky was a genius. Oh, Pinky was the genius. That's that's very true. Pinky was a genius. I never watched that cartoon. You didn't watch Pinky in the Brain? No. Okay, here we go. Um, but anyways, that's 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 my story about Instagram. I was I was a little embarrassed because I feel like there's a lot of members out there going. Why did Tom just post this all of a sudden? Creep. <laughs> uh, and well, sign up for the mystery mail call, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and kind of stuff like that. So anyways, comic fam, we're talking expensive paper. We're talking about pinky in the brain. We're talking about Demi Moore. What's going on? Um, welcome. I'm, I'm glad you're here. And to the chat, thanks for being here too. Um, I'm thinking we're going to jump into the first part of the show. Um, this is one of my favorite parts of the show. And this is where we chat about what we're ordering. Okay. So first off, I want to remind you, Mill Geek Comics over on Patreon. This is our homie, a member of the channel. His name's Russ Bright. He's an Overstreet advisor and LCS owner. And Ryan works there. He's not on the soundboard anymore though, is he? No, no, no. I don't think he's on there right now. It's I, I got a, other things on there. It's a boy Jim Mint, I think. Is uh, on yeah, the that's right. That's on the soundboard. But right now that's we have awesome. um, the ability to serve the community around the world. Get your comics and never miss out on your comic orders again. Um, what you do is you sign up via the join button on Mill Geek Comics on um, Patreon. Link is always in the description, of course. And what will happen is an email will be sent to you post you signing up. This $10 a month will get you free shipping. Right. And Ryan will be your... discount on everything you order, too. Thank you, Ryan. Got to remember that. Fire guy Ryan in the house. Ryan started the fire! And is Ryan... Is the longest you've gone without using the soundboard, by the I, way? I think so, man. This is, we're, that's we're, a record. Dude, we got a long show ahead. There's a lot of time to, to Plenty of soundboard go. options. So what Ryan does is he was going to contact you. And he's going to set you up so that you have an account and you'll be able to order your comics. Now, what we're going to do today is chat about some stuff that you can order. And when is the previews cutoff? It's the 26th of this month. All right. So you got some time, but, you know, give you something to think about. There's some comics on here. Actually, one in particular I'm ordering more of, like in excess of 15 copies. Weirdo. I am weird, but some of the members are going to appreciate that I'm being transparent and letting them know. Because maybe they want to order more than one copy. So let's jump into it. Um, get your comics at MillGeeksComics.com, uh, Mill Geeks Comics Patreon. Ryan will become you your dealer. Um, but we always recommend Google, find your LCS first. Correct. We have a local comic shop nearby. Support them. Give them a second try. They screwed up your order. Give them a third try. All right. But if you have exhausted all your options, we're here for you. We got to get you your comics, comic fam. And we're going to start off with this glorious variant, okay? This is W. Maxwell Prince. We got Ice Cream Man issue number 26. This one right here is four bucks. The reason why I'm putting this on my poll list this week, well, granted, I actually don't, I didn't put this on my poll list. This has been on my poll list. If you notice, it says here, um, granted, this is a, you know. You're not logged in, right? I'm not logged in. But if you were to log into mine, it would say subscribed and pre-ordered already because I get all the cover A's and cover B's of Ice Cream Man. Both. Oh yeah, I would just go with the covered bees. They're they're too good. Look look at this. Dude. Like that's so. Why is his mouth upside down or vertical? <laughs> well, why does he have a mouth that's vertical in his cheek? In his cheek, and yeah. His eye is exposed a little bit. It is creepy. There's flowers for some reason. W. Maxwell Prince has been hyping this variant for over a month, maybe two months. I've seen this. Like he doesn't traditionally post a lot of the variant covers for his run. So I think when he does, it means that it struck a chord. What do you think, Ryan? It's freaky. I it's mean, freaky. they're all really freaky. And that's the beauty of, I think, the variants specifically for Ice Cream Man. But this one, ugh. Well, stay tuned, Comic Fam, because we're going to be talking about some W. Maxwell Prince goodness here in a sec. But we're going to keep it going because this book has Ooh. got me, like, 
I have so many questions. First off, Tom freaking Taylor, come on. This writer, damn it, Ryan. He's really freaking good. That's kind of the best way to say it, really. That's Nightwing. Nightwing. That's, that's really all I need to know. Okay, well, you, you shouldn't just know that because he's done a handful of things that you're going to know. Um, and he's just been excellent. He's totally rebranded the Nightwing line and brought so many new people to it. Um, I've never really been super into Nightwing. Like, I, He's always my favorite, but like, I, I kind of come and go. I never read know? a Nightwing book before, but it's my favorite DC superhero comic right now. It's one of the books. I mean, there's, I have a lot of books on my pull list, and I get to them over time. But this one, I'm like, oh, the next one's out reading today. It's one of those situations. So when he's attached to this book, Dark Ages, I got so many damn questions. This one sounds super interesting. I mean, just listen to this. Uh, Mysterious description. Tom Taylor's on it. You know him from Deceased as well. And it's one of those writers that, as you say, you subscribe to whenever he's doing something new. But this particular, like, run of comics, when searching for exclusive covers, and I had a handful to look from, I was told... I'm not going to tell you by who. Yo, Tom, this Dark Ages, I think you're going to want to, you're going to want to consider that one. And you mean I, for the mail call? I was thinking like a possible, possible exclusive. Yeah. You know, kind of searching through what was available. So and somebody at Marvel? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying somebody that somebody told me, hey, told you. you should look at Dark Ages, Tom Taylor. You should be really considering because they think that this is going to be a banger. But the narrative is like impending doom. So, you it know, sounds... something from before time itself, which is like something we've heard before. I thought Null was, you know. Right. The description here is pretty much just like, we're getting the Avengers together. We're getting the Defenders together. We're getting the Champions together. But everybody d- is defeated by some epic supervillain from, you know, who's who's way crazier than anything they've ever fought before. And it's like, yeah, again, we're going to do this again? Like, we this happens all the time. I think there's going to be some ramifications in this. They got a really good good writer on it. Um, and really the art for the variants that we've seen so far, it shows heroes that are like damaged badly. Cap is bleeding on the cover. Spider-Man is torn up. So I think there's going to be some changes, some ramifications, possibly some deaths. I have no idea. I, haven't had, I don't have any insight on this. Besides, I was recommended to seriously consider this. This is on my pull list. I'm What's in. Tom up? Taylor. Six issues. I'm in. It's easy. Okay, there we go. Next. Next one, um, we have Ultimate Fallout, the facsimile edition. Okay, comic fam, full transparency here. I bought like 15 or, tw- I can't remember. I told Russ it was a lot though. He's like, really? But it was like 20 copies of this book. You know, the last time this was reprinted heavily was on the Halloween version. I think it was like a free comic book day, but the Halloween, Halloween, whatever they call it, Halloween Fest or whatever. And that book in Near Mint goes for 20 bucks because okay. Ultimate Fallout 4 has spiked to all hell. You know, so this right here just seems like a no brainer to me. It's four dollars with discount. You know, I, I've spent more on modern books. I might as well throw some money down on a facsimile. There's been too many facsimiles that have spiked. And it's Miles Morales. When I think of facsimile, too, I'm thinking of like a Bronze Age book or a Silver Age book. And for someone like me who loves modern stuff like this would never I would I'm never going to have this comic. So except for the facsimile version. And that's why I think this is a good bet. Now, will this hit crazy numbers? No, I don't think so. But I think this could be a $10 book very Plus it's quickly. got all the original ads so you could like Whoa. take a mind trip back to 2012 or whenever this was. Hell yeah, Mark Bagley, baby. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to keep it going because we have um, Dark Ages again. Man, I clicked that link like three times. Okay. Um, Nick Spencer's run on Amazing Spider-Man's ending. Um, I, not to my disappointment, but to many people's probably... Satisfaction. Satisfaction. A lot of, of people have not been satisfied with his run, and I think a lot of people will be glad to hear that he is leaving this book. Okay. Well, you know what? I am very excited to see that Peach Fumoko did this stunning cover. It is a pretty good expensive book, but this is the change-up of writers that's coming. The passing of the torch, if you would. And with this gorgeous Peach Fumoko cover, I had to have it. Like this thing, look at this. You see the sky, the the skyline back here, the I webbing. Did not even notice that. There's I know. Buildings I'm back there. There's so much to look at. The yeah. roses. I mean, you got to remind yourself, comic fam. Okay, I'm gonna do it right now. Uh oh. I've been waiting for this. I want the comic fam to realize what happened with Peach Momoko. We stole Peach Momoko from an entirely different industry. She oh. was going to be a tattoo artist. So you mean like, we stole her. She's in the kitchen right she, now. No, no, no. We didn't steal <laughs> nobody. Uh, yeah, so we went to Japan. No, no. Um, 
But no, um, Peach Momoka was going to be a tattoo artist. And she was dabbling in comics. She was training. She told me she was actively training to be a, a, a tattoo artist. Tattoo-ishinist. And now she is one of Marvel's biggest creators. One of the biggest creators of all time. And I'm not, 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 not of all time, excuse me. But like yeah. a, but in the last like two years. She's and she is on her way. Right now. In this current catalog, she's very busy. Like there's plenty of Peach Momoka variants just this month available. It's kind of right. crazy how, how much work she's done and is doing. The comic fam stole her from the tattoo community. Good. All right. We, we won. Screw them. Screw I don't those think I've ever people. heard someone talk about this. Screw those tattoo people. What are you saying, Ryan? You have yeah. a tattoo. You have a Green Lantern tattoo. Yeah, but it's On hidden. your butt. It's hit. Um, yeah, that's true. And my, I have two tattoos. Actually, no, you have the green one here, but you have the uh, yellow one on your butt. It's true. I don't recommend a yellow tattoo on your You've butt. You've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> comic fam peach momoko i call this a win in the in the community here because yes. we we secured an amazing artist for our community as you can see as you can see so right wonderful here. so there we go sorry tattoo community all right here we go now we have um some legendary stuff in the making uh red sonia over at dynamite yeah number one murka freaking and dolfo that's right no better time to get jump to jump on a brand new title, something that's been optioned. Something we got Conan coming to Netflix in the near future. And Mirka Andolfo is just such an amazing person. She's a lovely person. She's a killer artist. And she's writing this book and doing covers for it through Dynamite. And the narrative sounds like very welcoming to a new reader. I am somebody who has stayed away from uh, Red Sonia because it's I don't know where to start. It's, it's been going on forever. I've never really felt compelled to try. Until until now, honestly. Okay, new, well, a new number one. A new number one. It's gonna follow Red Sonia showing up to a village that was just slaughtered, and she finds a child with white tattoos, and she has to kind of take her under her wing, keep her safe as they go on, embark on a journey. So there's this high stakes because there's this vulnerable person that's with her. But Red Sonia, she's a savage. She's a she devil, and she's gonna kick ass. And shout out to Dynamite. Shout out to Vincent. Shout out to Nick for hooking me up with some pages to show the community. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Never. This is what comic fan. Where are you getting this anywhere else? We got some Sonia sneak peeks. Sonia sneak peeks right here, right now. The art looks fantastic. Look at this. Boom. It, it's savage. Now there's no writing here because this is just, you know, a, a, a little bit that's been pages. teased. Yeah. Um, and look at that. Bada bing. Let me uh, read you what. Mirka and Dolfo said about this, because if you're a Red Sonja fan, you'll be pleased to know this. This is what she said. Quote, Red Sonja is an extraordinary multifaceted. Oh my gosh. Butch is here. Butch is here. Here, read this because it's kind of far from me. Red Sonja is an extraordinary multifaceted character. And I loved her from the first moment. When That's asked right. to make my own version of her, I immediately accepted. She's been collaborating with DC since 2015. She's done pencils on Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Catwoman, um, bo DC's Bombshells, Teen Titans, Green Arrow. She did interiors on Teen Titans 12. What's up? Um, this is very exciting to me. Um, Red Sonia, put it on your pull list. Not only that, there's a handful of variants that I'm hyped about. Comic fam, you know I like Red Sonia. Take a look at this. Boom. Gorgeous cover. Boom. Another gorgeous cover. Boom. Um, this is the, the, the kid I was just talking about. Right. All right. And then look at this one. Fantastic. That took some time to do right yeah, there. That's pretty cool. That's hot. I love it. And then, of course, you got your cosplay cover. Supporting the cosplay community. I love it, Dynamite. Keep up the good work. And also, let's actually take a quick look at what we have here. Marvel Decoded says, I love you, Ryan. And he just won a giveaway. Show him what he or got. She. Or be, she. Yeah. That one right there. It's topical, too. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. That's us. Boom. Oh, there That's you right. Go. We have a Davy Go Red Sonja number one, the superpowers variant that's going to be yours. There's going to be a um, an email in the description of this video, but you can also just get ahead of it. Bags and boards giveaway at gmail.com. Email us. Mention the book, Red Sonja, the superpowers, and say that you won on a comic uh, on the podcast. Podcast number 43, and we'll send it to you. That's some comic karma going your way. That's how we roll. All right, let's keep this rolling here. We have what? Stray Dogs? Uh -huh. Never heard of that. Yeah, All right. me neither. Um, for real, um, I'm so glad that you brought this to the table when you did I'll immediately. I'll take full credit for the whole, for the entire popularity of this book. Um, you get full credit because you were the first person to be like, it was you me. need to read this comic. I'm excited about this comic. It hadn't even come out yet. But the trade is here. This is one of those moments where if you're like, I really want to 
get somebody else into comics. And I don't want to give him a superhero comic book. I ordered this trade for that exact reason. This is I'm going to exactly try and sneak it to my dad who hates comics and fun. So hopefully <laughs> he likes dogs. That's right. So maybe this is not the book to give a dog lover. Oh, well, there you go. Um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's a tough story. If you haven't read it, you got to read Stray Dogs. And now it's collected in a trade. Or it will be uh, when it drops uh, on September 15th. That's right. All right. And speaking of that, oh, please explain what's going on with this. Because Jeff Lemire, it's just one <laughs> of those situations where it's so damn interesting that I don't even really know. Like I, I don't even care. I just got to order it. Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino are like a, a top tier creative team for me. Kind of like uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Like when I see this creative team doing something, I am immediately interested if not like automatically on board sure it's a six issue miniseries called primordial that is apparently uh takes place during the cold war and it's about uh like monkeys that get launched into space and apparently (laughs) abducted by aliens they get abducted by aliens right it's gonna be (laughs) a wild wild ride comic fam and it's only six issues i love books that have a definite end that's how i feel ryan that's how i feel they're so good together like this is gonna be a great book dude this is the gideon falls team right like don't get it twisted comic fam just because it's a silly premise this could be an epic story it most likely will be with the two of them it's pretty much a guarantee in my mind all right keep it going eternals now this is a um like a tie-in. Uh, a tie-in, yeah. right, to the Eternals run. But this is Thanos Rises, right? Thanos has kind of popped up a few times in this Eternals run. And I'm not going to lie, it has not been my favorite book on my pull list. It is very dense and complicated, I think, as the Eternals should be. But this is going to be a cool tie-in that it looks like it's going to be like a Thanos origin story. So, I'm on board. I want to see what Kieran Gillen can do with a Thanos Well, origin. Eternals are created, all right? They're not, right. they're not born. They're created and they don't have children. However, this is going to dive into that story. You know, it's simply something that Eternals don't do, but some think that they can find a way. And they were very terribly, terribly wrong is what it says in the solicitation. But Thanos rises. And that's what I got. I, I, yeah, I love Thanos. So that's why I'm getting it. All right. Keeping it going. Dr. Strange, the death of Dr. Strange, a one of five series. I mean, do we even need to get much deeper into this? We have a, very vivid cover. Doctor Strange going to be seeing his demise soon. Uh, it's like what? a, I, th- I think it's like a, like a Batman Beyond kind of like old man Doctor Strange. Like, I don't think it's him dying immediately. I think this is showing the future uh, when he dies. Okay. That makes sense. Maybe. I could be wrong. I don't know. I okay. don't read a lot of Doctor Strange. There's not a lot of Doctor Strange out right now, right? Sur- Surgeon Supreme kind of came and went. I like that one too. That didn't really last very long. And I think this is like the first Doctor Strange story since then. Mm-hmm. I think so. I'm in. It's five issues. Again, it's going to end soon. You're not signing up for a giant ongoing series. Oh, and you know we got AW. No, 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 no. What am I saying? What am I saying? Is it AWA? This is AWA. Yeah, of course we got AWA on here because. That's why I put it on the list. I know. Dude, Ryan, you love AWA. I do. You've got me into so many of their titles. They are pretty good. Talk to me about this one. This is Telepaths. It's going to be a six issue series where some event kind of just awakens like telekinetic powers in like 10% of the world's population. There you go. And it's down. following two different people. Right. Uh, yeah. It's I've, got like I've a split go. protagonist kind of story. Cops and robbers sort of thing. Very cool. I'm in. I'm in. Comic Doesn't fam. take much to get me on board. I want to know what you're reading, Comic Fam. What's on your pull list? Please let me know in the comment section. Let me know in the chat. Help your fellow members. That's how we find new things. There's a lot of new comics that come out every single week. Independent. Marvel, DC, and if you're going, yo, Tom, what about the DC stuff? Well, you got to subscribe because we do a whole other preview show about DC because there's so many. The next time we're here, we'll be doing the DC catalog. That's how we do it. All right, this is how we do it, comic fam. All right, now we're going to get into... Can you get that on the soundboard? We should. This is how we do it. Yeah, I I like it. You're welcome. Uh, You just probably did it for me right there. Okay, so what we're going to do now... It's just one of those times where the comic fam just like helps us create a show because what happens is we decide, hey, we're going to do something fun. And then all of a sudden the comic fam says, I like it and they want to keep it going. We're talking $10 keys. We've done this a few times now. It's kind of fun. You know what? $10 keys. It's just one of those things, man. It's like when you think about keys and you think about comics that are worth a lot of money and comics that blow up for somebody like me who doesn't really ever do that. And it's like. I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on some 
comic that's way out of my price range, and I I just don't even care. With spec. you can buy so many modern books without money. Exactly. I mean, and I get that, man. Yeah. I've been there. But here's the thing: comic collecting isn't just about expensive comics. It's about all kinds of comics. You can have, do- dude. I have dollar bin comics that I, you know, keep right next to expensive comics in my. Uh, BCW plastic case that I have, you know, like my, my nice short box that I keep my slabs in and stuff, Ooh, you know? Fancy. I know, I get a little fancy with it. I'm very proud of my collection, Fancy Ryan. Dan. All right, so it's not just about expensive, expensive comics. You can get key books that are a dollar, that are $3, that are under $10, and that's what this conversation's about. Now, I'm going to, you know, we're going to continue doing you a solid comic fan because you know what? We've had a handful of these keys take off since we started talking about them because guess what? They were good spec. What's up? What? All right. You see what that uh, Green Lantern Black Hand's doing? No. All right. It was doing well. You see what Alpha Flight 1's doing? Doing well. By the way, thank you for that. You got me the Green Lantern uh, Black Hand first appearance. That I was, sure did. That was a nice con treat. Thank you. Well, you know what? I hook up my homies because when you're chilling with your homies. Uh-oh. There it is. Oh. I'm a little rusty, comic fan. It's like you never, that's the one you never use. I, I don't think oh, anyone's man. ever heard that song before, so it's hard uh, to remember where it they is. They forget, they forget. That's the thing. Yeah. All right, here we go. So, $10 key section. Now, we pick some books. Some of these are really cheap. Some of these are good spec books. Some of these may not happen. Some of these may. You never know. But some here's of them the thing. just look cool and like I want to read the story, which doesn't really happen on spec stuff for me. But, you know, some of these look really cool. I'm All not right. Gonna lie. Some of these are, like, in my opinion, if you are able to secure this for cheap, you're going to be happy regardless of if it happens. If something in the MCU or DC, it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's a little, a little safer. You're not right. going to lose your house because you skipped rent to buy a, an expensive book. All right, here we go. We're starting it off with the first one. We got Blade number one. What's up? Okay, so Blade uh, Blade one, Vampire Hunter number one. This is a $3 average book right now. First spectacular issue. First in his own solo series is going for a pretty penny. Like, it spiked tremendously. His first appearance in Tomb 10, I mean, that's kind of what we just chatted about. You're going to put a lot of money towards that, okay? But this book is a $3 book. It's also the first team appearance of Silver Eye, the covert uh, shield organization mobilized to eradicate vampires. And we'll know from the most recent Loki episode... I think it was the most recent one. It may have been last week. I'm, I'm getting my. I've had I to watch it. So I watched many times. them back to back, so it's like I, I saw them both yesterday. It could be one of the last two. I was, I'm almost certain it was yesterday. Someone in the comic fam will tell us. Right, it was now, either I'm this sure. week or last week. But vampires were confirmed. Vampires exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What's up? But that would have been a good X Files one. Too. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Just I kind of go, go go with both. All right, but here's the thing: we know vampires exist. We know Shield is playing a big role in the MCU. Blade number one issues will spike for sure. This book, I'm going to call it right now, will be a $10 book eventually. It's going for 3 to $4. Um, also, take a look at this because this next book is the variant copy of that issue. And this variant hits $115 on average because of cover art alone. So you have like Freddy Krueger claws over there? He kind of looks like it, right? What's happening? I know, it's freaking Blade, man. What's up? I've been watching True Detective. Uh, I'm getting to season three with Mahershala Ali, who's going to be playing Blade. And the whole time, I'm just like, Blade, Blade, Blade. He is Blade. such a freaking badass, He's a dude. terrific actor. He I'm, is fantastic, man. Yes. I'm very excited for that. Cottonmouth. Sure. Yeah, like, he was Cottonmouth. He was in Luke Cage. He was <laughs> such a... He was in a Netflix Marvel show already. Yeah, he's already done yeah, this before. Exactly. He, he knows He knows what he's doing. Ah. He's going to be so freaking cool on the screen. I can't wait. I miss Cottonmouth. Sign up. All right, next one on the list. Oh my oh, gosh, God. that's right. I did. I did it. I did it. Uh oh, what's going on here? I don't, you got away uh, from the bad book. I got away from the bad book. What uh, is going on? Oh, wrong button. There we go. Don't uh, do that. Gross. We got Young Blood issue number <laughs> two. The comic fam's gonna be like, "What are you doing? Putting me up, Young Blood on this list?" Comic fam, we're looking yeah. at Young Blood number two. This I need is to go a change my pants. <laughs> you love this. I don't. <laughs> this is some Rob Liefeld this hurts. goodness. Uh, what hurts about it, Ryan? It's Rob Liefeld, man. Why don't you like Rob? The story, I'm sure, is even going to be gross. Like, regardless of what this looks like, it's going to be people, you know, superhero teams engaging in pointless fights. Dude, what's wrong with pointless? You ever watch Dragon Ball Z? N- no. Well, you should. Actually, I did. I watched a little bit of Majin Buu stuff. Dude. That was cool. And that's actually kind of like after give, the I'll really, really good one. stuff. You need to watch know. the Cell stuff, the Android 1718 nah. stuff. Come on, come on. Comic I was like sixth about. grade, so, you know, everyone had, everyone's got, everyone gets a pass when you're like 12. Oh, my gosh. I used to draw that hair all day long. Come on. Ugh. Okay, Young Blood number two. Oh, this, this hurts. Book, you can get this for five bucks, comic fam. Mm. First appearance of Shadowhawk, five-page story featured on the back cover. First appearance of Prophet. And I'll remind the community that 
during the early COVID days, May 2020, this book became, uh, it, it, it grew and went on spec radar and exceeded $10. Why? The writer of Arrow was hired to develop profit for a TV series on the CW. Arrow is not a show anymore, so he's probably got nothing else to do, especially during the lockdown this whole time. That shows, I would assume, if he's still working on it, it's probably pretty far along. Right. I mean, how much material is there to work with and, on a shallow Rob Liefeld book like this? Oh, my gosh. I should actually read some of his stuff so I can complain, like, with, you know, evidence. <laughs> you, I need some evidence, <laughs> Ryan. Back it up. I, I, I'm not believing you uh, right now. But here's the thing. This right here is a minor key. Okay, it is a first appearance. It goes for very cheap. And a CW show, as soon as it hits, every one of these people who are going, you know, who are naysaying. Are they allowed to do non-DC stuff on CW? I wouldn't even, I never even thought of that. I don't know, man. I guess they did Riverdale. That's not DC. There you go. Right? All right. Is that on CW? Again, if you are anything. hunting for comics and they are cheap, go for high-grade copies. All Correct. right. High-grade copies with all these. Again, this is cheap spec, but it's cool. All right. Speaking of cheap spec, <laughs> we have. Uh, <laughs> uh, I right. hate the 90s. <laughs> I did. But here's uh, the thing, man. What can you say about the 90s? Because it's been 30 years. Uh, and what does that mean? That means everyone who liked that stuff when they were a little guy is now 30 something and can buy it. That's right. We have the nostalgia cycle in full swing. We've been talking about G.I. Uh, G. Joe, Transformers. We've been talking about He Man. Then we're talking about 90s stuff. Power Rangers is even spiking, like the original, um, like the, the first appearance book. We also have Ninja um, Turtles. Ninja Turtles, you know, uh, uh, which is a little older, but still. Beast Wars is back in, 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 in a IDW book that I'm like the only subscriber on, I feel like. <laughs> so I, I can't lie. I'm, I'm vulnerable to nostalgia as well. Well, why not Wildcats 1, which is a $5 book for a near mint high grade copy? Yes. Was it printed to all hell? Of course. But. We have the first appearance of multiple characters, Zealot, Voodoo, Spartan, the Grifter. That's right. Grifter was on spec radar because of Future State, and he's doing stuff now. He's kind of in the background of the Batman run, I think, right now. That's right. They pulled him on Recently. in. Recently. I don't know if he's been in recent, like lately, but he's he's been in Batman lately. As soon as you start Ish. to complain about Wildcats being on my list today, consider this comic fam. Yes, this was printed. Jim Lee book. Okay. So you're going to complain about a Jim Lee book. That's what you're doing. If you're, if you're complaining about wildcats right now, but here's the thing, you know, let's just add another layer to that. You know what else was coming out around the same time that also had a ginormous print count X-Men. All right. Jim Lee, Jim Lee. Yeah. Come on. And what's that book doing? People scoff. They're like, oh, that book will never be worth more than a dollar. And granted, it's not worth crazy amounts. But it's still, you know, high grade. People are hunting for newsstand copies. They're worth money now. You pull them out of a dollar bin if you find it, you know. Pull out Wildcats 1 if you find it. The further away you get from it, the less, you know, available it's going to be, I guess. And, you know, time. That's what I'm saying. This next one, we got Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur, issue number 15, the first meetup of Riri Williams and Moon Girl. Makes That's sense. Fun. It's fun. Did you like this book right here? That just I, looks, I want to re, I want to see where this cover comes from. Is right. this does this happen? There you go. In the book. In the book. She's roller skating with the jetpack. She's which got a, would she be has, awesome. Yeah, think how dangerous that is. That's true. She's yeah. very small. I would just whoosh, right like or just hit straight a car. to the floor <laughs> or hit a car. Right. I want to see Ryan on rollerblades. You, you, you could have not rollerblades. Those are like actual skates. Like she's got like uh, rewind like reels. 25 years ago. You could have seen me on some sick rollerblades, man. Did you wear the things on your wrist so that when you fall, you oh, don't hurt dear. your, I never fell, man. Come you on. never fell. I didn't even wear a helmet. You didn't wear a helmet. No, I did. I did. Oh I'm my kidding. gosh, man. You had so, to wear a I'm helmet, so scared, man. man. I wore all kinds of pads and, and you know, <laughs> real slow. <laughs> like, really slow. Well, there you go. But I fan. did. This book is a $3 book. People don't know about it. People don't talk about it. Shout out Octavio. One of our homies in the community, but also on the team in who helps circle. us source books yep. like this. Because when it's not being specced on, it's a good time to secure. You may have this in your back issue bin. I mean, honestly, if you're an LCS, you may have multiple copies of this just sitting around. You know, This is a good example of a series that is going to be responsible for the younger generation liking comics. This is a, this is a popular run with a certain demographic, an age group. That's right. Remember and I this believe book? these are both adapted. Uh, they're both optioned, right? So Ruby yep. Williams and both. Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur. Double optioned. It's event books, right? When cool. it's an event, it could be something long term. Again, it may not hit thirty dollars, but it could. It could hit ten dollars. And for a cover price book, that's probably in dollar bins. Right. 
it, it makes it the, it makes my list, yo. Plus, worst case scenario, you hopefully get a r- mad roller skating jetpack scene in there with a dinosaur. So. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Blue Beetle number three. This was uh, some high res goodness, but you know what? This was on spec radar. I don't even remember if the community like. I mean, we have a lot of new members here, but Key Collector and our our show essentially in like the same day simultaneously spilled the beans having an inside source that John Cena was confirmed to be peacemaker that happened all right we got credit for that shout out key collector we got word on it we have confirmation we had people like on the inside baby we're finding stuff out for the comic fam hit the subscribe button but the question then became which peacemaker Ooh, which peacemaker is gonna be is gonna be the fantastical weird one no probably not right probably be the modern one john cena john cena is gonna be a silly goofy guy Come on. Well, this right here is Blue Beetle number three. This is the modern version of the Peacemaker. And yes, turns out he's going to play the goofy version. But you know what? James Gunn, he likes taking risks. He wants that goofiness. And John Cena is going to bring the heat. But you know what? This is a modern book that was hitting above $20 for some time. And now you can secure it $10 all day long. Just be patient if if you're not finding them listed. But this book is not being specced on. John Cena is getting his own show. On hmm. HBO, all right? Like, they're good. They're, he's he's going to survive Suicide Squad is what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Or get resurrected or some weird James Gunn trippiness, I'm sure. Something's going to happen. Something will. And if they went with the other version of Peacemaker, it makes sense that the version they did not use would drop in price and drop off people's radar. But if he's getting his own show, they're going to want to, you know, use other ideas over time. Certain things are going to happen. And What if he changes style? What right. if he goes... You know, modern peacemaker, and this is a book that people were specking on. Sometimes hot books get cold. That's a great time. That's to when you spec. buy. Them. Yeah, once that's when you buy. Once them. Nobody's paying attention. That's right. Next one. X I did this one for you, my brother. Thank you. I did this one for you because this people is adorable. People are sleeping on it, man. Pint size X babies number one, three dollar average sales. Um, this is my notes from Octavia. Listen to this. The X babies are slowly. Uh, gaining attention don't sleep on this one the first appearance of uh 21 characters that's right 21 x-men characters we have uh mutants that if mutants hit the screen you know there's no telling what they'll do over on disney plus hey i like his note here what about kids we're seeing all these shows right now out the gate granted they're delayed and that's why we're seeing them now right but we would be shows ahead if covid didn't happen what will end up happening is a entire portfolio that's going to mirror the star wars portfolio what's happened with star wars on disney plus right they got the cartoons again so they're starting to okay okay they're branching out i could see that so if x titles are coming and we need stuff to spec on people are like really all about um you know obviously um strange academy for example well, that right. makes sense right Ooh, that would be a cool cartoon it would be a cool cartoon it's a great spec right now i hey, think Mint's in the house jim <laughs> Damn it. Right. Bottom. It's your there boy, you Jim Mint. Oh, I'm sorry, comic <laughs> fan. I typically go through them right beforehand. Let me try it again. Say it again. Jim Mint's in the house. Oh, snap. It's your boy, Jim Mint. That's right. It's All right. Jim Mint. Yeah. What what show do you have? Jim Mint on the damn soundboard, comic fam. This one. This one. Hit, hit the like button, it's comic this fam. One. It's Come this. on. It's us. And how I just terribly just like don't We know have it. a bunch of other sounds on the soundboard, too, that Tom, um, as you, as you we can should see. label them. I, I should label them. Write on them with this Sharpie, and that way you can never, ever, ever remove Jam in from the soundboard. X-Babies. Don't sleep on X-Babies, especially because the first appearance of X-Babies in full, we, we chatted about when the X-Men turn into X-Babies in issue uh, annual 11. Well, we Do have, they fight other babies? Are there oh. villain babies that they are in, in fake combat with? You're going to have to read it, comic. Are they, are, they, are they punching other children? Is this like baby on out, baby violence? Full out brawl, my brother. Like in a, like in the bro. playground? Are they I in don't school? Remember, dude. I don't That's remember. What, I, I want to know, man. I, I it's like the annuals, man. I, I it's one of those ones where it's like I know I got to read the annuals, but I stick to the main. Is it like Rugrats but with superpowers? That'd be so cool. Like, you know, Chucky with Cyclops powers. <laughs> Chucky with Cyclops powers. <laughs> I want that. I want a I want a Rugrats exclusive. That'd be cool. Boom Studios. Where Shout you at? Out. Boom. All right. Well, right right here we have the uh, first full appearance of X Babies. Um, same. You know, speaking of X Babies, right? Don't sleep on the first appearance. This is a a uh, $3 book and it's a thicker book. It's going to be harder to secure in high grade, especially the newsstand. Look out for the newsstand. That's what I would recommend on all these ones. If you can find them newsstand over direct copy, high grade over all else. Right. Right. Because they're cheap enough that you might as well be picky. Make sure that they're clean 
and that they are mint. It's your boy, Jim Mint. Okay, here we go. Let's keep it rolling here. Look at that storm cover. Bada bing. Next one. Ooh. I put this one on here just because that feeling that you just had, that sound. Can you do it again? Ooh. That is the same noise you made when I first showed you this comic book. I make that noise a lot. It, well, you, it just happens. When you talk Sorry. about, you know, when you talk about things like Galactus, we all know Galactus is coming, right? Who do you associate Galactus with besides Fantastic Four? Silver Surfer. Always. Silver Surfer, Galactus. Galactus and Silver Surfer. The trifecta. Johnny Storm goes to college. Like, these are the things we think about, right? You know what I'm talking about, comic fan. Well... Doctor Strange and Galactus has, they, they have a, like a long history as well. And having them on this cover, this is a classic book, an Infinity War crossover, issue 42 of Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme. This book goes for criminally low for as awesome of a cover this is, and I would be happy to own it no matter what. How, okay, I, I, I've been, you know, I know you've been saying a bunch of stuff, but ever since you put this cover up, I feel like, like Galactus is supposed to be bigger than this, right? Like, how tall is Galactus if Doctor Strange is that size in his hand? That's a good question. He's supposed Ryan. to be like larger than the whole planet, isn't he? He's huge, man. Right, and now he's. I don't know. I don't. I don't fool around with statues like our boy Jim Mint, but I feel like the the scale is is off here. You think we got some statue scale problems? If I knew, you know, offhand what a one eighth, you know, looks like or something. You'd be like, oh, this is not that. Doctor Strange should be a lot smaller on, on Galactus's end, I feel like. Well, you want the cover to look freaking good, man. We can't, we can't even put this on the list now. This oh, is, take this it is off. No, good. Yep. no, man, but how, how cool is this, man? To because be real, it, though, this is my, uh, this is the, out of all the books we have here, this is the one that, that appeals to me most, other than maybe X-Babies. <laughs> I, know you I have, have, I have discerning taste. All right, there you go, comic fam. I mean, and this one isn't like necessarily a huge like spec book to me. This is one that if I found it for a buck, I'd buy it all day long. This is one that I would like to get graded at a 9.8. I think it's freaking gorgeous. You look at this background. You have like almost like these Kirby designs back here. Obviously, it's not a Kirby book. It's got to be on Galactus ship, you know, like all that weird trippy design on his on his ship in space. That's how it goes. I want to know what happens in the book too, which which is rare. Yeah, man. We got to go through the Infinity War crossover and cover every single we issue. We should probably, that's a good idea. We should probably do that. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. This next one here, we got Spider Girl issue number six. That's number six. Okay. This book right here is the first appearance of Lady Hawk, the female Falcon. Okay. Now, will this happen? Probably not. Maybe. I mean, Everyone thought Joaquin Torres was a done deal. I kind of thought that was going to happen, and it didn't. I wasn't even paying attention that closely in the show, I guess, because I don't even remember this character. Joaquin Torres, man. He, I mean, he helped like fix those wings up and everything. You know, he's, Someone's got to take on the mantle of Falcon, but who's to say there can't be more than one Falcon? Come you on. You don't know how long the show's going to be, too. They might run out of ideas by season 12 or something. You know, like we'll Keep it going, right? Yeah, but exactly. you know what? This is a uh, the female version. We also have uh, Spider-Girl, which is a run that for those of you who don't know, was so liked when it was coming out. Marvel tried to end it multiple times as just like, they were like, we're done. Like we can, we can end it, move on, do something else. And the readers kept it going. Like you can look this up, people talking about it when it was on their pull list, people writing in, demanding more Spider-Girl. Like they weren't, hmm. they weren't going to let this run stop. So what that means is, and, and just a little side note to that as well. I've owned a handful of Spider Girl comics. The chat will help me out here. You'll know what I'm talking about. These pages, they're they're rough. Like not the interiors are writing, but like the quality. Like the paper isn't the best during this time frame. They tend to get beat up. And considering that readers were actively reading this run to like to all hell, these are really tough to get in high grade. So I would say just on grade alone, this is exciting to me because if you're a Falcon fan. You would want the other Falcon appearances, but if there's MCU spec to be had, having a high-grade copy, I bet if we look up the, on the census, there's like a minuscule amount of these. I'd never even heard of Lady Hawk until I came over to your house today, so there you go. what that's worth. Now, Ooh, did you know I did that not know. freaking Conan? I learned a lot today, guys. This right here, Comic Fam, is my favorite book on this list today. I'm going to blow your mind. Todd McFarlane did a Conan cover. Conan Babies. Conan babies. Is, is there a baby Conan with a sword? Baby barbarians. And abs. 
That's right. That'd be cool. They're like Spartans. They're like freaking just ripped. Three hundred babies. babies. There's three hundred babies. Why don't we? Frank Miller should rewrite three hundred. We should, we should make comics, but oh with babies. God. Just everything's a baby. Yes. It's like Dracula straight. babies. Dracula babies, dude. <laughs> X Men babies. No one X-Men. thought of that. No one thought of X babies, man. Yeah. Let's 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 trademark that one. All right. So Conan the Barbarian two forty one comic fam. This book is one that you need to be hunting for. Very fine near mint. This is what's really cool about it. Look at this price right here. $5.50. I just proved $5. it to you. Okay. But here's the thing. If you go onto eBay to look up this book, this Todd McFarlane Conage, Conage, Conan Savage book, you're going to see them listed for $20, $30, $40. 9.2 is hitting over 100. 9.4 is hitting 130 or so. Uh, 9.8, that's like in the three to $400 range. New stands that are selling for an inflated amount. People who want this book, they go and buy it now. No one's looking for the book and they're being and they're not being patient because when you see auctions end at under ten dollars, but high grade copies that are being listed for that amount, it's because just people don't know that this happened. Conan is on pace for Netflix. Red Sonja is on pace for I, I believe it's a movie, is what it's sounding like. Co- it's the Todd Father, man, and this is a stellar cover. I did not know he even did a Conan book. Is it just me, or does this look like? I don't remember which issue of Spider-Man it is, but I feel like I've seen a Spider-Man. It kind of does. You're talking like, like I think it's Spider-Man eight. It's not 300, but there's one where where he's like another famous one of his from this angle. And like in kind of this pose, there you go. Either way, this cover is freaking awesome. And I have pretty vocally not been a Conan fan or a Tom McFarlane fan, but Conan two forty one hot damn comic fam. We love comics here, especially when they're done by the Todd father and when they're affordable and when you can find them on the hunt. That's why the comic fam comes here. We're chatting comic books. We appreciate you being here. Okay, let's keep it going here because we have some comic books to discuss because we read comic books too. Comics aren't just for collecting because they definitely are. There's stuff inside them. There's stuff inside them and I love it. I love what's inside them, but we have announcement. We got a big announcement. We haven't even brought this to the mic yet. Oh my goodness. Ah. This is crazy. Ah. This is going to be a nuts. This is going to be nuts, all right? Okay. All right, so you guys ready for this comic Strap fan? it in. Scout Comics. You know we love some Scout Comics. We We've do. done exclusives with Scout we Comics. Do. Shout out, James Hake. Come on. This dude's awesome. Writer, running stuff over there. We have a new product that they've released. I've announced this on Instagram, but we're going to announce it here on the show right here right now. We have a uh, very, very cool product that they are taking to the market. It's available now. And there's a reason why I'm showing it to you because we have teamed up with them to secure one per box in the mystery mail call, hopefully indefinitely. And what are we talking about? Well, let's take you back a couple, a couple beats. All right, let's go. Not, not money beats, not like in the ground beats, not porridge, 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 like Goldilocks, like beats. What are we doing? Isn't porridge like with beets in it? I thought porridge was like oatmeal. (laughs) Oatmeal? It's some old timey Goldilocks food. I don't know. Which is the beets? The beets soup. Borscht. (laughs) Borscht. That's what I'm thinking of. Not porridge. No. Borscht. That's on a weird, weird tangent right now. Here we go. I don't know my soup comic fam. (laughs) What is porridge? I I don't know. It's like a cereal or something. I thought it was like what they fed people in prison. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Porridge and, and you know slop. Like with the, <laughs> the Matrix, you know, like them, just oh the yeah, goop. like the, the goop, right? There you go. It's all oatmeal stuff. Oh man, shout out Scout Comics. <laughs> shout out Scout Comics. Can we just retake this? Okay, no, we're, we're not her- live or anything, okay. are we? This is what we're talking about, comic fan. Back in the day, when we did the mystery mail call, we've been doing it for like three years now. Three years. Oh, what was that? Three years. Hot damn, comic fan. All right, so back when we first started doing the mail call, before we were teaming up with amazing uh, publishing companies like Marvel, Dynamite. Uh, Boom Studios, even IDW, even Skybound. What? Coming? Hey, that's for another day. Conversation for another day. But um, it was a very difficult task before we did exclusives because we're trying to bring value to the box, right? We're trying to get stuff that could pop in the market, something that gives you a lot of value for your money, right? Right. And what we were doing at first was like, well, let's get reading material in there, right? So yeah. we used to do graphic novels. We did. A lot of was, my graphic novels went in there. Yeah, a lot of, like most of my I got rid of most too. of my collection and threw them into mystery boxes for you guys. Dude, we were working together trying to do something for the comic fam. Now, we stopped doing graphic novels because it was was very difficult to please every single person. And once we got so many people in the box, it became a huge project to try and hunt down X amount of graphic novels to get to fill all the boxes. Exactly. And it wasn't a, it wasn't worth the, 
it wasn't worth the task at hand because not enough people were liking what they were getting. Right. Because we got to try to find like volume one. Sometimes you know? we got volume two of, of a grind or something. Hey, but the MSRP just, is 30 bucks. Doesn't matter. You no know? one's going to want to read a volume two and it just became a big thing. And we didn't have as many members, but you know what? Instead, we started to hook up members with like modern comics and other things in there. So you would get an assortment, right? Sure. But here's the thing with, with modern books. We're still sending out some time. I mean, we try to do our best. I mean, we're doing our best every single month. We serve a lot of members and we're putting our all into this. It's something we work on literally every single day. Every day. Every day. Okay. That's what we do. But we are making a change to the mystery mail call. All right. Not only are we doing a children's book in every single box that's appropriate for the whole family. Right. Uh, Children's homage. All right. Which, by the way, um, we should probably show the. Uh, actually, no, we'll do that later. Um, we will going forward insert a comic tag in every single box. A what? What's a comic tag? Okay, comic fam, this is what a comic tag is. Take a look at this. Oh, boom! Here, Ryan, what is you should that? you should take. Uh, here, let's actually show them these ones here. You hold that one. Give me this. Look at this. Okay, so in every box going Can forward. I open this? Uh, don't open those ones. Don't open it. No, because you know these are for the the community. So we're gonna they'll do get the, the ones that we touched. Exactly. We're gonna we're gonna be doing giveaways and stuff like that. So don't open them yet. But I do have one that I'm gonna open up and I'll be able to show them. But cool. so this is what a, a a comic tag is, comic fam. And we're gonna bring you over to the uh, to the joint screen here. So take a look at this. This is Scout Comics brand new product, and what it is is a collectible card. That is also a digital graphic novel. We will be inserting a full digital graphic novel in every single mail call going forward starting in July. What's up? Yeah. And but I it's mean, so small. That's right. It is very small. <laughs> you take a look at this, though. All right. So, this is what it looks like here. Um, this is a better, um, you know, we're holding them here. We have them in hand. We'll show you. But this is a better view of it. So, we have a fold out that's essentially like an ash can to a degree. You have art on the inside pages. And what's on the inside is this card right here. See the Stabity Bunny card, this Phantom Star Killer card. And what's on this card, actually, let's bring, it up. Let's bring this one up right here. Uh, Log in. Never mind. Okay, here Just we go. Just kidding. Just kidding. What's on this card here? Let's see if I can get a good picture of it. Yeah, let's keep it on right here. If only we had some. I know. We have them in hand, but I want I wanted to see the, the big one here. We have the mall right here. And what this card is, here, let's bring them to the, let's show them here. Bada boom. Okay, so take a look at this. We have a card. Actually, let's, mm, let's open it. Don't we one. have one open? I thought yeah. we opened one. We opened them, but I opened But it one. wasn't the mall. We're going to open one up here for you, comic fans. So take a look at this. So every single mail call will be getting this. This is a $6.99 MSRP Scout comic tag. And what this looks like is a, I mean, compare it to a comic book. An actual comic, yeah. All right, it's that big. But look at this. This right here is a full graphic novel that's in here. You open it up. You're going to want to do it carefully because it's awesome. You open it up. It's cool. There's like a little preview. It's like a, a miniature page. That's in right. the comic. Like you're getting a sample of the book and a code for a digital graphic novel. A whole graphic novel, not just like a single issue. That's right. You, you take it out and take a look at this. We have a collectible card right here. It's got the cover of the comic book Keep on it. Keep it in your wallet. Yeah, you can carry it around for good luck. Whatever you want to do with it. it totally up to you. But on the back of it, there's a, a SKU code and there's a uh, little scratch off right there. And that code, when brought to... The website here that we were just showing you, comictags.com, at checkout, you put that code in and you get an entire graphic novel downloaded to your phone. You're going to be able to read an entire book with every sure. mail call that you get now. So no matter what, even if you hate every single book that you get in your mail call, you get a full graphic novel at least. It's so a mystery get, box, man. We're trying to you know, make, you make everybody happy. You will be able to happy. get something readable and not just issue 10 of a series or whatever. Maybe you randomly get a bunch of crap. <laughs> that you doesn't know. happen with us. But, right. but about random stuff that you're not into or something. Exactly. But you know what? Now you get an entire you get a full graphic, self-contained story, which is cool. I I miss us doing graphic novels, but it's impossible to do like physical graphic novels with the amount of mail call that we make. That's right. All right. And take a look at this. Um, because we've done so many exclusives in the past with Scout, they are letting us be the first to like put this to be cool. able to do this. Um, so aside from everybody getting. A, um, it's the same one every month in July, comictom101.com. Everyone will receive a mall graphic novel digital with a collectible card. But because I'm the first one to really like 
do my own sure. batch for the community in what we're doing. I'm taking my exclusives to a limited press. So 500 members are going to be lucky to get the Comic Tom exclusive version of the mall comic tag. That's right. The card itself is the exclusive we took, and there's only 500 Comic Tom ones. And I'll let the community know, Peach Momoko said yes to letting us use the Peach Momoko exclusives on comic tags. We did two Peach Momoko covers through Scout. So we will be making... 500 Peach Momoko collectible cards. Little baby peaches. Little baby peaches, man. Oh, that's exciting. Going um, in the mail call eventually. We do have the mall on deck, though. Comiton101.com to join. Shout out Scout Comics. Super hyped about the comic tags. You know, it's like a weird, like, it's a, cool it, it's a collectible. It's a full graphic novel. It's a digital graphic novel. Yeah. Slash, you got like a page in there as well. It's and if you're like me and you read something digital that you really, really like, it, you know, I'm, I'm going to go buy it. I'm going to go buy it so I can have it on my shelf, so I can represent, so I can let people borrow it. There you know? we go. Comic fam, an entire PDF. Um, I pulled up the the next months just to like download it and go through it myself. Right. Over 150 downloaded pages. And it's one file. It's a graphic novel. It's an entire graphic novel. Yeah. $6.99 MSRP. You can buy these. They're cheaper than a graphic novel. So you actually like... You know, it makes sense, like, why they would do something like this. Because at LCSs, you can get, for the price of two, sometimes three graphic novels. You you know, well, rather, for the price of one graphic novel, you can get, like, three, okay. essentially. Um, which is really cool. So, um, hooking up every single person with a graphic novel. Um, Anthony says it says that it's dumb. That's fair. That's fair. You don't, you, If you don't like it. It's not for everyone, I guess. Yeah. Put it online. Sell it. It's That's got true. a $7 MSRP and we're going one per box, baby. Especially if you get one of the more limited Comic Tom variant versions of it. I mean, That's right. More rare. All right. Make it happen, Captain. All right. So now we're getting into reading comic books. Oh, and The Mall, by the way. Excellent book. I still haven't read it, so I'm excited to... I don't know if I'll be able to get one of these, but mm-hmm. I would like to read it. That's yours. Okay, cool. Well, cool. I'll take, I'll take this one. That's your copy, Bella. You're Exciting. welcome. There you go. You can have it. You can download it. Talk about it. But here's the thing: the mall is about uh, a group of kids that their uh, their father is is a mob boss in the '80s. It's based in the '80s. Okay. And the mob boss dies. The kids have to run the show. I love mob stuff. So and that's, because that's all like, me. That's all you, brother. That's why everyone's goes. gonna get to read the mall. We'll all be on the same page next month. Anthony's like, I'm. He's like, he's not trolling. I'm allowed to have his own opinion. That's fair. That's fair, brother. I you kinda, can have I your kinda, own opinion. I kind of like that. There is a. a I can tell you, you're opinion. wrong. It's like freaking awesome. It's cool. I'm just a fan of digital comics anyway, though. So maybe maybe Anthony doesn't like digital comics. That's a whole discussion we got to have at some point, too. <laughs> He's digital like, way to call me physical. out. You said it, brother. You said it live. That's fair. It's in the chat, brother. We are live. It's all good. It's all love. It's all good. All right, here we go. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to read some comics. We're going to go page by page, <laughs> read them out loud. We're at story time. We're at story time. Nap time. Buckle up. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, we, we talk about some comics that were that we read that we think that you should absolutely take a look at because it's fantastic. Okay, here we go. First book, we talk in duplicates. You know what? Side note, uh, ever since this book came on my radar, I have accidentally been using the word duplicate instead of the actual duplicate. Is that right? I don't really say the word duplicate very often, but I have found myself accidentally saying duplicate. Oh, because of this? Yes. It's like wormed its way into my brain, which is my original brain that I was born with, by the way. There we go. Not some sort of duplicate organ. Okay. Well, we got Carla. uh, Carla Nappy. Nappy. Mm -hmm. Carla Nappy. And this was one of those books that I'm very excited that you brought to the table, Ryan, because when I read it, I was like, hot damn, dude. I love comic books. This is a unique story. This is something that's just like, it's a, it's a spin on what I thought had to have been written recently. It's very but, indie. It's from like Second Sight Publishing. It's a bunch of Kickstarter stuff. It's it's very, very indie. There's not even a lot of people ordering this at Mill Geek. I love uh, Carla's inspiration about how she created this. So Carla... T- chatted. I saw an interview with her where she said that she was, you know, she's actually like into like writing TV scripts and stuff. She's like got that. a background in television. That's right. Yeah. And she wrote out a bunch of different ideas. This was one of the ideas she had that she thought would be a kind of a fun, different show that she can do something unique. Well, she took some like comic writing classes and this ended up becoming a comic book. And this was a, a fun quote that I wanted to read you because it's kind of like, you can kind of see the thought process of how she came to to create this type of thing. Can you read this right here, Ryan? It's kind of small. Yeah, in the back of the first issue, she kind of gave an example of of a few of like the pitches that she gave for this comic. 
to kind of like summarize the premise. So it says, you've been in a horrible accident that destroyed your arm. Instead of a prosthetic, you'll be fitted with an exact replica of your lost limb. The cost is simple. A lifetime of servitude to the highest bidder. Welcome to the future of medicine. Ha, damn. Okay, so right now we have duplicant. We have a pandemic. She mentioned that this was actually written and started prior right. to COVID. This was a freak coincidence. <laughs> this is a book about a pandemic. It's like people with masks on and stuff. Yeah, it's a little, this book kind of hits differently reading now. It's unfortunately really relevant. We have a world where people's organs are failing. Like 10% of the population, they just start having problems, passing out, stuff's failing. This is the first page of the book, by the way. It just opens with this horrifying scene of people just falling over. It's, the art is fantastic. Look at this. I mean, the shadows are great. The I, Really, use of lighting goes a long way for me. Uh, a lot of depth and so, the the character designs are great all very unique because there's so much going on there's a lot to look at and that's what i like man i like the near future uh, vibe of this book too like the the cars look all futuristic that's right it's and nice. in this world you have to have some type of solution for a pandemic situation of that nature but here we go we have a a, a lead character We'll find out that he becomes the lead. We're going to spoil a little Spoilers. bit of issue number one because this is on issue number two already and issue we want you to get in on it. Yesterday, actually. yeah, Just dropped. Just, yeah. I'm caught up. Wow. I'm typically not right? like that caught up. We need, Yeah, me neither. There we go. So issue two just dropped, but we're going to kind of get into issue one, so spoilers. But by the end of this, you're going to want to get this book on your pull list. I recommend it. So we have a lead character here who is pretty much the person behind um, – the streamlining process of people getting their new organs. The cure for the disease that this gentleman comes up with is duplicate organs. That's right. right. So you get your organs fail, so you can now buy replacements. <laughs> so your your liver fails, you go to this guy, and instead of like getting a transplant from somebody else, they just sell you like an artificial liver. That's right. And you're you're fine now. But here's the thing. That kind of stuff costs a lot of money. It's expensive. And with 10% of the population needing stuff like this, you can't just have it be for those who can afford it because everyone would die. Right. So there has to be some way to rope in some way of payment. And the way that that happens, well, we have um, a world where people's kids are sick. We have a world where um, different religious sectors are starting to look at the situation a little differently. It's kind of, yeah, another another freaky echo of, of the real world with, with COVID and stuff. You get people reacting to the, uh, the pandemic in a bunch of different ways. There we go. But we have a character here. Now, you'll find out that this character is, you know, granted, she's the one we're following, but she's about to go through an entire ordeal in this issue. And that ordeal will result in death. That's right. I scared Butch. I scared Butch, man. Now it's he's a scary kinda, idea. It is it's scary. So she wakes up and she's everything's fine. She's like a paralegal. She's about to take the bar exam. Things are looking she's good. She's got a pretty promising law career. Yeah, she's things are looking up. Except her lung starts giving out and she passes out and she needs a lung transplant. So she gets a lung transplant. This isn't about a story about how she can't get it. Right. It's about that. No, you, you get it. She gets one of the replicant lungs. But then the story unfolds. How do people pay for their lungs? Uh, basically by going into debt, which is another commentary on on kind of the current medical system that we have, where like the cost of medicine is very, very high. Correct. So uh, as she is getting her lung transplant, we also see in between these panels here, she's waking up. And while she's That's waking so cool. up, That's we so see cool. an auction happening. And what is this auction? It's for people to bid on the person for enslavement. They're buying these people who are getting replacement organs because that's you know, they're basically paying for her new organ. So she's able to live from the pandemic, but now she is going to kind of be Servitude. a servant to whoever pays for it. That's right. It's a freaky idea. It is very freaky, especially considering the stuff that she has to endure. Now, we won't get into too much detail, yeah. but what I will say is there is a ramification of if she doesn't do what she is told and what she's, you know, to the person who purchased her. Well, those organs have a little bit of a, 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 a fail safe, like, like a way to. Right. It's kind of treated as a conspiracy. Like some people in this book believe that the regenerist tech, the company here that is responsible for producing all these organs, that they've made some kind of like backdoor way to like shut them down 
if you don't cooperate with your new your new owner, basically. Right. And that's where that's kind of what happens you. to her. That's yeah. what happens to her. So you have to find you have to read issue one. It's a very compelling story. The yeah. narrative is like it's very quick because you're like, wait, what's happening? And you can you can tell she's worked in TV too. This feels like it should be a TV show. Like it's got a it's got a really I don't know. It hits differently than other comics do. Well done. I'm uh, I'm a big fan. I'm going to be reading every issue of this. This is a cool book. It's dark, dude. Yeah. Unfortunately, some comics hit differently. This one makes you think about the real world in a few uncomfortable ways. Right. Thankfully, the real world is not exactly like this. So but can, it's the future. You never know. This could this could be the future. All right. The next book on our list here that we get to chat with you about today is another uplifting, fun, happy book. You can tell by the title. You know Look what? How happy he is. W. Maxwell Prince. Savage. Right? We were talking about him earlier. Brilliant. Creative. Right. Just uh, mind-bending. He's a father, okay? Like, he's, like, over on Instagram, I encourage everyone to follow him on Instagram. He's just posting, like, the most basic dad stuff, you know? Reading with his kids. What a wholesome, adorable guy. You know? Just, like, normal dude. And then he writes stuff like this, okay? Now, the first thing I want to chat about is Something that the community's got dead freaking wrong. Yes. You're wrong, comic fam. Uh-oh. I, I solemnly go on the mic that harsh, but you're wrong. That is harsh. I'm scared. Because you know what people say about this? I think I know what you're going to say. They say that this is like Ice Cream Man. W. Maxwell Prince is the writer of Ice Cream Man and the writer of Ha Ha. This is nothing like, hi- like, this is nothing like Ice Cream Man. It's unfortunately compared, that, compared to that because of... Cover. You right? take looks, away from the brilliance of what this run has become. It's not an Ice Cream Man knockoff. It's not an Ice Cream Man spinoff. It's not an inferior version of Ice Cream Man. It's no. got nothing to do with Ice Cream Man. The, the closest thing you can say is that there's like some existential horror and surrealism. Oh, wow. It's an anthology. It's an anthology. Whoa, it's so similar. Yeah. Are you going to compare it to Goosebumps too? Like, no, this is completely <laughs> different. Okay. Ugh. This right here, if you look at Ice Cream Man, out of the 20 some odd, how many, dude, we were just talking about 26, right? It's 20, like yeah. 26 issues. Every once in a while, there'll be a book in Ice Cream Man that you're going to go like, that yeah. was wild, that was crazy, that was cerebral, right? But then there's a book that makes you go, damn, ouch, yeah. ouch that was deep, right? Ha ha takes those moments and puts it on a pedestal. That's right. the focus. It's for those types of moments. Not as much horror. Ice Cream Man is definitely a horror book that is horror. scary and has some pretty freaky, creepy, dark, scary moments. Right. This is a six-issue miniseries that is exploring different ideas. Not scary, not like a big spider guy is going to, like, whoa, it's issue one Ice Cream Man, right? It's about that spider the kid has who, like, bites his parents and, like, kills them. That's right. You're not going to find a lot, of, a lot of that in Ha Ha. It's a different kind of, like, vibe that you get from these books. Right, 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 right. And this one right here is a anthology that follows clowns, yes, but it's not even like always the traditional clown. Um, we're going to kind of just show you a little bit because I don't want to give too much away because every book's an anthology. So if right. I give away too much of a, one book, you're just going to be like, oh, why do I even need to read it? But I'll give you an, a, a slight overview if you don't know because um, we have W. Maxwell Prince's like, style of course you know his his superb writing style but he's teamed up with a ton of different artists there's different artists attached has a different artist and actually the sixth issue is going to be drawn by martin morazzo the ice cream man artist so they are teaming up for the final issue of haha hell yeah dude i'm so hyped about that one that's gonna probably be the best one in my opinion but here we go uh vanessa del rey um from redlands we have gabriel walta um from vision from vision we have roger langridge from thor um so this right here um, this was a Vanessa Del Rey. This is the first issue. Issue one, yep. Man, every every issue is drawn in such a unique style that I appreciate and that I absolutely adore. Well said. There we go. So it's pleasant to look at, but it's also creepy. It makes you think. I mean, issue one follows the a clown who's just got. He's trying to just feed his family. He's a cl- his job is a clown at a carnival, but the carnival is getting shut down, and he's about to. Lose everything. We have Funville, which Ugh. will become a, a narrative throughout this. And this will make you, you get through some of these issues and this, this right here, will make, this will mean something to you. I suggest you reread all of the issues once you read 
the issues once because you're going to notice that there are aspects of other issues very, that have been very small whoop. connective threads throughout all of these. And it's hard to remember them. If you wait a month, you know, in between each issue, go back and binge the whole thing all at once. You'll pick up on some connective tissue. That's right. Funville will become a, uh, a place that, that gets routinely brought up sometimes, but this clown has a tough time. All right. But look at how it's drawn. Look at the panel placements. Look at the, just like the, if this doesn't make you intrigued, I don't know what does draw. Like, look at how, like they could have been straight lines and, yeah. and clean, neat boxes. Like you would see in any other comic, but like the way the division between the panels is drawn at an angle, the way his, his big shoe down there at the bottom, like right. all of this, it's gold. We have a comic book that will literally take you in the mind of a clown that has a bullet going through his damn brain. Yeah. Come on. How okay. often do you see that? How often do you see that? Okay. And it, it doesn't just stop there. Haha ha issue number two, which is my favorite of the batch so far, is so grounded in realism. Right. That it is so off-putting, but beautiful in the most creepy way. They all kind of have a weird, well, not supernatural, but like a little a sur- whole- surreal element. Like this guy, this clown gets shot in the head and, and you kind of see the way his brain sort of melts down after that. And that's not really realistic. No. This one is unfortunately very real and it hurts. So I'm not going to get too deep into the later issues. Um, however, what I will say is that Ha issue two is is like, that makes you, there's, there's a point in this and I'll, I'll point out the panel. It won't mean much to you if you haven't read this, but if you have read it, you will know what I'm talking about. But we have a narrative that follows, um, we have the narrative that follows a young girl. Now, this young girl is a grown adult. Right. She's a dancer, okay? And she, her name is Rudolph. Her name uh, is Rudolph. I remember that very clearly, yes. And Rudolph is going to tell you the story about when her mom started to lose her mind. Yep. Takes her on a trip. Takes her on a trip because angels told her. Right. You get a, a front row seat. Uh, uh, literally, actually, from a mother and daughter as the mother loses her mind. It is so off-putting, but also wholesome. Right? It's it's weird. It's very it's, strange. And it's very W. Maxwell Prince. Like, only he could tell a story like that and have it hit all these different notes. We have these moments where, oh, of course, the, the mother is... Her in, mother is, is also... A clown. A clown. Right? Her mother's a clown, and her mother is going to do what she has to do to put food on the table and to get to where they got to go. It reminds me of Joker, right? Didn't didn't we have... We had a whole bit about that. Right? We were going to talk about that. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll talk about that next time, but Maxwell Prince doesn't like the Joker. Correct. The he, movie, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker film. Correct. And you know what? After reading Ha Ha and after seeing how he handles clowns... They tackle very similar subject matter, like the mental illness yes. as, rela- as it relates to clowns and people who perform as clowns. It feels almost like a like a like a ha ha story that could have been, but I can see the the big differences between the you know between Joker and ha ha. So, um, fireworks, man! This comic has fireworks, and this one panel. Now, com- I'm telling you, comic fam, you got to read this. It's an important comic book for you to read. Um, a lot of you know, it's obviously it's mature. Some major yeah. subjects, some major themes, some unpleasant imagery, but like fireworks inside her skull. This panel made me stop and like I had to take a breath. I yeah. had to like stop and be like, well, hold up. This is probably my, there's five issues out of, of six issue miniseries. And unless the last one blows my socks off, like ha ha number two, I think is the standout. I think it is as well. Ha ha number two is a brilliant, brilliant comic book. I don't know how Max W Maxwell Prince does this stuff, but then we have ha ha issue number three. And what do we have here? We have an entire issue. That's like essentially a silent issue because it's, a mime issue, right? We have a, we're following a, a mime. And what do we got? We got a mime just roughing it, you know, on the streets doing his thing. And look at the art style changes up again. It's joyful, but it's also funny. And yes, there's no text. And it's a silent issue. I love that. I love it, dude. But you can't read this one too fast. No. The temptation with silent issues is like, cool, this is like a free issue. I can just bust this out real fast. Yep. You got you, you to take your time with this one. This one's like a Pixar movie almost. It gave me like Pixar vibes. It felt very sad and heartfelt all at once. And I don't know. I, 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 I really like Ha Ha number three, but it's, it's definitely not my favorite. There we go. Now, um, we have 
a also a comic book that you just pulled out. You should show it on the camera. Um, we actually had the, um, we were, okay, here we go. We were lucky to team up with Very lucky. Zoe Lucky. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. This to do a ha ha issue three variant. Show it on screen, dude. I did. Just show it again. Show Keep it, it again. up. Keep it up. It's so good. So this one right Can't here is our um, Zoe Lucky. Look at, look at that screen over there. That's like it. Well, there, That's you go. there we That's go. It. Um, this Whoop. is our exclusive that we did for the mystery mail call. And we're very, very excited to have done this because um, having our branding on one of W. Maxwell Prince's comics is an honor. So um, here we go. Uh, <laughs> we have, uh, let's see here. Are you going to give this book away? I want to give a, yeah, we're going to give a book. Okay. What I want to know is I want to know who's read issue two of Ha Ha. And I want to know um, what you thought about it in the chat. And we're going to give exciting. this exclusive away to somebody. How exciting. So um, go ahead. Let me know. I want to know who read issue two and we're going to get you an issue three. But this right here is issue number four. And this right here takes place mostly inside of a balloon. That's definitely W. Maxwell Prince. That's, really some, that's some ice cream man level. Okay. That is, right that is actually yep. some ice cream man stuff. But dude, look at this Ugh. art, man. Ugh. Oh so good. Oh my gosh, dude. It's just, it's just crazy what he's doing over there. Okay. Comic and he doesn't fam. explain it. Why is he in the balloon? How does he get there? How does he get there? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's so good. Just read it because it's awesome. Just like the next comic book we're going to talk about. Ooh. That's why we're getting some xenomorph stuff up over here. Let's do it. This book's been going on for a little while now. Issue four came out a couple of weeks ago. So it's not that far ahead. We like to try and pick stuff that is. Still ongoing for you to for you to jump onto. There you go. Ha ha's almost done, but there's still there's still time to read all five of them. But it is an anthology, so you don't need to read all of them before you get the last one. Oh my goodness. I got it. Comic Journey. There we go. Comic Journey just won his exclusive. Congratulations, brother. He said he read ha ha too, and it makes you feel uneasy when reading it. Yeah, but that's what I love about comics, man. So now you get ha ha three. There Just you go. Just like that. Just like that. That's how you do it. You got a comment, comic fam. All right. So we have Alien going over to Marvel. And as someone who read the Dark Horse stuff when I was in high school. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. It's been that long, dude. We're talking like 12 years ago. I was going to say, so like three dude, years no, ago? Three years ago, right now. So, so little. Because I'm so young, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Dude, when I was in high school, I'm talking like a long time ago. Right. Like, I was like, dude, I was on P.E., and for whatever reason, Gross. we had like PE, but right before PE, they make us sit on the floor for reading period. So we would read for like 35 minutes. It was a weird amount of time. It was like in whatever PE? they could. Yeah. Well, my PE was in sixth period. Okay. And it was always between fifth and sixth period. So it's a separate thing. You didn't go to gym class to read a book and then work out? No. You go to gym class and it happened to be the period that you get added to the day that's just for reading. So there's no chairs. So you sit on the freaking gym floor and read comics. And I would get into arguments. It didn't happen often. I don't want to exaggerate, but it happened more than once. Did you beat someone up? I've never beaten anyone up. I am a very nice you try person. It. It's fun. I don't touch other people. I beat up nerds every day, man. Ryan was the bully. That's right. That's right. You don't want to mess with Ryan. <laughs> Ryan started All right. the fire! No, but what I would do is uh. I would be reading a book. And, dude, I don't, I don't read chapter books, man. I've talked about this on the mic, man. I just, like, I can read fiction. We were the opposite. I did not read comics until after high school. I was all about novels and Stephen King and, like, The Godfather and stuff. I'd be like, no, no, no. This counts. This is a trade paperback. There's, it's okay. It's a graphic novel. It's a guys. graphic novel. It's okay. My One dad said it's fine. I remember my dad telling me, like, yeah, I got a call, and you were reading Hellblazer in, in gym class. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Because, like, they're like, what is this about? Smoking? Okay, cool. Is this smoking? He's yeah. like, he's got cancer and he's trying to like sell his soul to get rid of the cancer. Like, dude, yeah, it's, 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 it's some good Constantine stuff, man. And they didn't understand, but you know what? I was reading comics in high school and my PE teacher had to deal with it. What a so, dork. But I also read the Dark Horse stuff because I'm a big alien fan. Now, it's been a minute, dude. Like, I don't, I'm not as like, I've never read on, that. This is the only alien stuff I've ever read. So, what I'll tell you is that Dark Horse did a fantastic job continuing the alien legacy. But that was only, there were only two alien movies made at that point, right? Like, That's right. Okay. They were trying to do sequels, you know, cool. they were continuing the continuity and that would get changed as the movies would come out. And the good alien movies. movies, right? Number three yeah, and four that everyone loves. Ones, yeah. Ghost alien movies, you know. But um, the thing about Dark Horse that you had to respect is that they put a lot of effort into the art, a lot of effort into the writing, the narrative, and it was a 
interesting, cohesive story that rooted itself in the continuity. And you get respect for that, right? When Marvel acquired the rights, I remember chatting with this on the mic, and there was a split in the community about this. Because what did Marvel do? They like they did an awesome trailer, and then they alienized, Alien, alienified? Alienated? Alienated. What are you trying yeah. to say? They made... They did like varying covers with like Marvel characters and and xenomorphs. Oh yes, okay. A- I remember alienified. That. I remember uh, Captain America blocking the little little jaw with his with his shield and stuff. There were some there were some cool covers. There was a lot of cool covers, but the thing was is that that like made people made people made people feel people. Yes. made people feel that okay, well like what is what is alien? You know, you have a very strong anti corporate message message right. right. Um, you know, Waylon Utani. That's the big bad Come on. evil corporation all the way since the first movie. It's been about an evil, yeah. like almost like an Amazon of the future kind of corporation. Would we see that like get adapted by Marvel? Like Marvel's a big company. Disney, like, you know, you know, Disney that's, that's, is a big company. Doesn't get know. much bigger than that. Oh my gosh, CGC's getting bought out. What's going down? Like, okay, no. Rated G aliens, everyone. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. That's people were worried. Uh, that's another good point too. The gore. Right. People are really worried about the gore. Are we going to still see? Gore. Are we going to see the uh, the blood? The, the face huggers. Are they going to suck the crap out of people's face and have stuff explode out of their chest? Come on. People were worried. Right. You know, what about the narrative? Like, are we going to follow people? Are we going to see people from the original series? Are there going to be new stuff? Are they going to retcon stuff? What are they going to do? And to my, uh, I don't even want to say surprise because I believe in Marvel and I know that they can do amazing stuff. Star Wars. Star Wars. Killing it. Good example of them acquiring a property and doing some pretty good comics with it. Charles Soule, baby. All right. Come on. Not bad. Come on. Give those a try, too. Okay, so what we got is Alien, and damn it, Ryan, they kill it. They do pretty good. They're doing not pretty good. I was kind of worried. Not going to lie. You oh my can gosh. say you had faith. I was a little trepidatious. I was worried. But you know what? Let's let's talk about this first page. Okay. okay? I just want to talk about this first page. Let me read this to you for the audio fam. Because remember, Ooh. we're on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. So if you're, if you're with us on the chat, we appreciate you. But you know what? There's people who aren't watching, so we're going to just set the scene. Can you describe what we're looking at as I read this? We're looking at blackness. The dream always begins in the dark. You think you know what that means, but you don't. You can't. The dark I see is a truer shade than just the absence of light. You can't find it by just clapping your hands over your eyes. Dark like this gets you, excuse me, dark like this gets into you penetrates you, tightens around your skull, presses into your eye sockets until something pops and even the memory of light, even the belief in light, drains away. Creepy. Creepy. This right here is someone in space. This right here is the story of somebody new in the Alien franchise who experienced something in the past that he overcame and now is a very well-renowned person who's part of Waylon yutani Right. They have this space station, and the main character of this book is the head of security at this space station. But he retires. In the first, in the first few panels, it's like his retirement party, and he's getting shipped back down to Earth for a normal life after living up in space and doing a bunch of freaky space stuff. This is 20 years after James Cameron's world. Right. This takes 2, place 20 years, after, 20 years after Aliens. That's right. This is the memory that he has. Yes, he had some bad things happen to him in the past. We don't really see a lot of it, but what we do see is pretty scary. This is a two-page spread with a whole bunch of aliens. We see, we actually see like what I'm a, appears to be some type of like female anthropomorphic. Looks more human than any other alien we've ever seen. The, the word alien, the word queen, unfortunately, applies to a different thing in the alien universe. But this appears to be a like a literal queen, like a female ruler of. The aliens. It almost looks like there's a hive or yeah. a cave or something that there's. He saw something in. creepy. I don't yeah. know what, but this drawing is excellent too. Salvador La Roca does the art for Alien. Dude, Salvador La Roca is a beast. He draws these guys very, very well. That's right. And this comic book follows uh, this person here. His name is Gabriel Cruz. Right. And he's actually dealing with 
the android from the, the from the movies from Bishop. That's Bishop. That's man. Bishop. Yeah. Man. And Bishop is there to as his like uh, therapist a bit. He's kind of a therapist on this yeah. on this space on this uh, space station. It's kind of fitting, right? It makes sense. Okay, so he's dealing with his troubles from his past, and this narrative we're not going to get too far into it because we want you to check it out. But he's retiring. Right. He's people love this guy. He's done a lot of good. He made this part of the company what it is, and he's got a son. He's got a son who is not happy that his dad works for the big, bad, evil corporation. Unfortunately, his son is a part of what you could probably call like a, like a terrorist organization. Like a Minutemen type group. Their goal is to kind of destroy this company, I guess. And his dad just so happens to be a high-ranking security member of this company. Some shenanigans ensue. I don't know how spoilery you want to get. No, we're going to get spoilery because we're already on it's already issue four, four on this. four issues deep. So this Let's is issue go. one. And you got to, yeah, you got to catch up, comment fan. We're here for you. But you know what? You got to, you got to get this book, at least issue one, because what we see is a, you know, actually, let's bring it back here. So what's really fun about this particular book is in issue one, you have multiple narratives unfolding. Right. You have our lead, Gabriel Cruz, who's like dealing with retirement and doing stuff. You have his son who is really troubled, doesn't have a good relationship with his father, yes. mad about capital, about the corporate aspects of the Weyland Utani. And then we also have a narrative that's slowly just kind of thrown in the mix of what Gabriel experienced in the past this, that grew him in rank. This traumatic event from 20 years ago, which just so happens to be right around the time of the Aliens film. Some shenanigans might have happened back then. Some bad things. And what I like is how that flashback sequence it kind of echoes there's it, we go back to that storyline i think in every single one of these four issues Absolutely. we get a little more of that of that backstory my favorite part about this first issue at least is it's all about the humans right there's there's i don't think there was a there's apart a, from that like spread we'll get at there. the beginning we'll get there's there. not a lot of alien action happening it's taking its time to establish the human characters and why you should care which might turn some people off because there's not a lot of like horror, carnage, destruction right out the gate. Not yet. Not yet. Things get nasty pretty soon, but it starts with some good character development, which is pretty important for a story like this. What does Danny do? The son of Gabriel? He steals his card. His security access card for the space station. He's about to go in. Oh, and actually, we were just speaking of the, the flashbacks. This is how it feels like, right? Like you're seeing a development of a story here. He stole the card. They're up to some something probably nefarious, but right. maybe for a good reason in in their minds, right? But then you get a flashback of stuff like this, face huggers, Look at Gabriel. color, though. Man. Like it's so dark and shadowy and, like, scary. Like how, but then you have, like, the, the most truest blue right there of Ugh. just space and... Emptiness. Emptiness. Oh. Yeah. Like, you just feel it in your gut. And then more... What is... Uh, boom! 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 Face huggers. Yeah. Aliens, negative space, making Mignola proud. Come on. So I love cool. the the close up of the alien jaw, like from the movies too. And like that's right a good, that's a good thing to use in that's the comic cool. here too. It's it's creepy. I love it. I can hear it, you know. All right, but then look at this. It's graphic. <laughs> this book yeah. has a lot of gore in it. I, I, dude, I was worried about not having gore. Right. And then you get the gore. It says parental advisory that's on right. here. So that's what just goes so on. the parents know. It's it's a nasty book. They go in to cause a ruckus. Can you zoom in on the kitty down at the bottom? Yeah, this kitty right here. There's a kitty who unfortunately is amongst the scene of carnage, and I think he's defending his dead master here or something. But Hey, no worries, man. Spoilers, but the kitty makes it, and you got to see what happens. So yes. it's okay. So this is what they find after um, after Danny and his, his uh, crew who are going there to cause some problems. They find what looks to be some type of cloning like or manufacturer. Research kind of thing. They're doing something. It reminded me of the beginning of 28 Days Later. Sure. How that movie starts, the whole zombie apocalypse in that movie starts from a group of like hippie terrorists who burst into this animal research place and accidentally set the zombie monkeys free and screw everything up for everyone. There you go. Kind of what happens here a little bit. Well, yeah, they're going to shoot and what's going to end up happening. The yeah, the colors are uh. fantastic, man. The, all the noises and the, like, the I feel like I'm watching this movie. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of times I've noticed where they will do alarm sounds in the breaks in between panels. It's, it's a subtle kind of effect, but it like implies that it's ongoing throughout every moment of, of this, scene. this whole scene. There's an alarm screeching over and over stuff's bad. You know, the shotgun blasts are bursting some of these right. uh, pods here. And of course, Ugh. face huggers are coming now. What I will say is, 
the a little bit about this narrative just so that you know if this doesn't get you hyped enough for it we have this station that is now being taken care of by Waylon Utani because they have to deal with this and they're about to just throw it out there has been a, a massive security breach at their research station up here so their plan is just shut the whole thing down let it re-enter Earth's atmosphere and just disintegrate problem solved all these aliens are taken care of but Danny's there the guy, as well Gabriel's as something son, important. Yeah, he's still he's still on board this ship, as well as some super secret, top secret alien embryo that the company really doesn't want to lose, but they will sacrifice if they have to. They cut a deal with Gabriel Cruz, the retired security guy, to go up there with a couple of low level military grunt dudes and try and find the uh, the super secret embryo. If he can, you know, go ahead and, and save your son too if he's still around. But we want the we want the you know the goods. We want the technology. Absolutely. They don't really care if he makes it back or not, you know, with or, with or without his son. They would like it, but, you know, sure, go ahead on the suicide mission on this space station that's about to disintegrate. If he comes back with his son without the techno- without the embryo that they want, they're going to jail. Yeah. It's corporate terrorism. I'm kind of concerned. Not concerned. That's not the right word. Where's this going to go? Because this feels like a one-story arc, right? This is gonna, This is about to, about to end. Like, well, things are popping off on this space station. This can't go on forever. This is a one-story arc, right? So, like, where... Where can this alien comic go moving forward? Well, what I what I know is that whenever you watch an alien movie, at the end, there's always more alien. Right. You know? So that's going to lead to some more, as you say, shenanigans. But shenanigans. before we move on, I just got to point out, Inhyuk Lee's doing damn covers on this, and they're beautiful. They're pretty cool A covers. But Patrick- I'm going with the variants every time, personally. Go with the variants, comic fam. These are so freaking stellar. Look at that. But look at this one. Patrick Gleason. You like, son of a bitch. You can keep the I freaking love your ASM art, 55. If you ask keep me. it. This is my favorite thing he's keep done it. at Marvel. Keep your ASM 55. I've got that too. Your Venom but... covers. I don't care what web covers you do anymore. Right. This right here is what it's about. Patrick Gleason kills it. Hot damn comic fam. Aliens. You reading it? I want to know. Ryan is. I am. We is. We is. That's right. Okay. Can we do another giveaway? Let's do another giveaway, brother. I want to give a book away to someone. Yo, you know what? Um, got two I, more. I like what uh, what a homie here says. This is Comic Toby 420. We haven't given one away to him yet, have we? I don't know. I don't well, think so. He just won. Cool. Yep. Because he said Fire Guy's girlfriend, Tessa, is in the chat tonight. Oh, he did say that. Yeah. She's here. And she is. There you go. So, uh, hi, fun. Tessa. Hi, Tessa. Fire Guy Ryan. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. It's got a girl's brain. I'm blushing. Uh, he's blushing hard, Comic Fam. Com- it is really hot in here, too. It is a little hot. It's caliente. Comic Fam, we appreciate you. Here you go, Toby. Listening to us chat about comics because we love comic books. We All do. Right? We do. We really do. Okay, so now what we're going to do now is uh, bring it to our main section of the show. And you know what? You posed a question on Instagram yesterday, I believe. Right? I did. Or the day before. I, I don't remember. A question. The days blend together. I wanted to know from the community... I wanted convention tips. Comic Con specifically. We went to Comic Con. We did. Two weeks ago now? Yes. That feels like so it feels like just yesterday. We went to Puyallup. We, we did. went to a convention. It was awesome. It I had a really was good time. Pretty cool being back in the mix with everything. Okay. It was a little weird walking into a building without your mask. You know, if it doesn't it doesn't quite like feel right being back to normal, but it You're feels, vaccinated, it feels baby. good. Like it's it's cool to be back in 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 something like that. It's ninety nine percent immunity. I enjoy Come it. on, it feels good. It feels good. That way you can chill mm-hmm. with your homies. It like every day. And you can kick it day. like every day. We got Butch in the house. What is up? Hit the like button for Butch. Hit the subscribe button because we talk about comic books. Do and it for Butch. Do it for Butch. He demands it. Butch He'll start. Demands it. He's gonna do it. All right. Or so Butch. so the return of Butch. conventions means something very important. There's a lot of new members who've never been to a convention. He believes it's been almost two years for most people. So now what we're going to do is chat convention tips, tricks, and what to do to get an edge on enjoying it to its fullest. And I reached out to some major members of the comic fam, and we also reached out to community members. But one thing that really started this conversation was uh, Ryan sharing me his experience meeting Kyle Higgins, this most recent convention. Yes. I was hoping you can talk about that. Kyle Higgins, the writer of Radiant Black, was at Comic-Con this this last time that we went to. We waited in line, got Radiant Black signed from him, and I pretty much, I, I'm not good at this part of cons. I like, my favorite part of going to conventions is getting books signed. Sure. Meeting creators. 
having that interaction with them. It's all great in your head, but then the moment you walk up to them, you're just like, yeah, I like, I like your book. Please sign, please. Here's here. And, and it's not, I, I forget, suck. dude. I suck at it. I'm there with you all the time when you're like, hey, what's up? And you're really, you're really engaging and like social and, and easy to talk to. Well, I forget, dude. Like, cause like I've been there, man. I've been Ugh. there back in the day and I would get nervous with artists and creators. I mean, I read their stuff all the time. I get excited. I follow them on Twitter and Instagram and all this kind of stuff. And I realized, oh, it's just practice over and over again, waiting in line, meeting people and just getting that, that confidence to just treat them like a person, you know? They're people. Yeah. They're people sitting there too. behind their tables there. You know, they're at Comic-Con. So that got me chatting with you because you're like, oh, yeah, I wanted to, you know, I want some tips on like how to feel comfortable in these types of moments. Because you What do wanna... you say? Exactly. What do you say? What do you do? And that's uh, where really, this whole conversation started. I like your book. I like your book. You wrote a cool comic. Thank you. Thank you. I like the comic you wrote. And then all they can say back is, you're welcome. Or thank you. You or, know what? And for as awkward as that sounded, Ryan, I guarantee you they've heard more awkwardness. So, oh, sure. so if you That's can even true. get that done, you're doing fine. So, um, we're going to talk about convention, um, you know, what, to, what to do, um, just exciting opportunities at conventions, ways that you can better the hunt that you can go in prepared. And we got Jim Mint, very Gary, Reggie collects all providing some insight, AKA Mr. Bolo. And also I wanted to start off this show with a kind of a flashback, flashback. because a lot of members haven't, uh, watched all of our content. We have a lot of stuff. We've we've been been, on YouTube for like over three years now. We've been doing this for a while. And I wanted to showcase one of our videos where I felt like I made a pretty good connection with somebody by the name of Donny Cates. Who? The bad boy comics. Oh, right. That guy. Yeah. That guy. And um, what was cool about that situation is I got him talking about something that he liked. And it kind of reminded me that this is something that other members may be able to learn from because what I did is I went into it prepared. Now I was going into it to make a video. So your boy had cameras out and you know, it was all planned out. Maybe we can set the stage a little bit because we're going to show you a clip from a blast from the past. Oh. It's only going to be a two and a half minute clip. It wasn't very long, but it's a thing. It's a whole video. If you want to, if you want, yeah, if you want to check thing. it out, it's a uh, Donny Cates needed an, a comic book, Emerald city's comic con 2019 vlog. And we're acting a fool. I think in this video, uh, we tasted some Hellboy beer. We did. That was kind of fun. And in this video, I gave Donnie a comic book because I wanted to get him talking about something I knew he would like. And I knew it would be a fun time, and it made the experience really fun. So I want to talk about that. Um, so in order for us to get this footage, what we had to do is wait around for the best opportunity, and we had to wait for uh, Donnie Cates to leave his area and go around the table because he was being such a nice guy and walking around and taking pictures with people. So we thought, well, if we want to get some good audio because, hey, we were a brand new channel, we didn't have the best equipment, we got to get kind of close. So um, this wasn't like, he didn't know that this was happening. He gave us permission to post it after the fact. Sure. Um, This was orchestrated to happen, but. Tom is a genius. Hey, doing what I can for the comic fam. It, the, I'm not a genius. The inspiration only happens because of the community. So um, what you're going to see here is us giving Co- Donny Cates one of his favorite comic books, and we will see you in one. Actually, no, dude, we're going to be on the screen with him. Why not? We, we'll watch too. I want, no, this because the, I'm worried about the, uh, we, we will watch too, but I'm thinking that it would give pro- them the full picture. I'm going to give him the full picture because, right. um, yeah, we'll give him the full picture. Here we go. Let's see here. And that's uh, Katrina Fox. Shut up. Sure. We'll be right, right back. So this is what we got. Donny Cates spiked a handful of books last year, yeah? They're going to Carnage, Mindbox. Right off the bat. Yep. He doesn't own a copy of Carnage, Mindbox. That seems odd. That seems very odd to me. Let's fix that. Alright, hey. How you doing? You. What is this? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. You need to own a copy oh, of this book. Oh, sweet, sweet baby. Sweet, sweet baby. All right. Have you read it? I've read it, but a lot it's of people have it. It's the fucking craziest shit of all time. It's, it's, insane. it's insane. It's fucking insane. So here's the real story behind it. I found it in a very pivotal age. I was like nine or ten or some shit when I saw it. And I'm reading this book that like my parents just assumed that comics were cool and like that nothing was wrong in them. The thing is, it 
fucked me up. That book legit, like, I just, like, poured over it. I, like, read all the drawings in it and everything. And, like, Kyle Hoss is a fucking madman, dude. We, I got Kyle to do some of our carnage stuff now because of that book, right? Yo, I'm just going to read this shit. So I'm not even going to take care of it, so... Yeah. Well, that, you do it. it's your, this your is your copy, man. I roll just, shit up in my pocket. I, I brought this, and I'm like, you know what? The off chance that you still don't have I mean, a, a copy. I'm looking. Oh my god. It, okay. It's, the, it's, it's like yep. hard it's to the look mind at, dude. Of a serial killer. Yeah, dude. He like, like this, this is, is a parent nightmare. It's, this is. It's awesome. He fucking. He drills a fucking hole into this dude's head and fills. And like, there's like pictures of like Lee Harvey Oswald's <laughs> rifle and shit wow. in it. Okay. Look, he like makes a corkscrew. Look at this shit, dude. Is it just a one shot? Yeah. It's a one and shot. Look, he drills into this fool's head and he's like, this is how I see the world. And like, rips open the fucking page and he's just like, this is me. Like, it's fucking crazy. But, um, what's cool about it, I made some, I made some kind of offhanded comment about it at one of the Marvel retreats, and Tom Breaver was like, dude, let me tell you about that book. He was like, I edited that book. I almost got fucking fired. Because Bill Jimmis, who was their editor-in-chief at the time, was like, um, I want you to do, I want you to make an, an R, like an R-rated Carnage issue. It's kind of like real hot, hot at the time, right? But Breaver was like, all right, that's what you want. And he hired fucking Ellis, who is not the dude that you want to tell to go crazy to. So he got Ellis to come in and Kyle Hodge, and then this issue came out and went to the fucking printer and Jim is saw it. And was like, what the fuck is this? And he was like, isn't that what you wanted? And he was like, no, fuck. <laughs> and so like, they, they, they tried to pump the entire run, but it was too late. But it went out. And then, so, and then little Donnie Cates got it. I found it. it. And then, uh, yeah. so is that one of the things that kind of like set you on that path? Because I know Venom was a big influence. Huge influence, yeah. Um, I never wanted to be in comics, man. I never wanted to do. But these like, stories from like that you wrote when you were a kid, right? It's all in your head. Yeah, but I never, I never thought about. I never actually do this. Oh my friends, oh, like that's I remember I used to. I used to tell my friends because I was like the comic book dude. I used to tell my friends just like made up facts about me. Like, uh, I would say, like, his green slime is because that's how the symbiote processes like bullets and stuff. Like, like breaks it down, that's the green slime. And here's the thing all those were lies, but now they're all fucking canon. So I wasn't lying back then. I was just ahead of my time. Venom has wings because of you, not because of Rune. Because of what? Oh, Rune. Yeah, that's right. I know the answer trick. Can you hold this for me? Oh, absolutely. Oh, man. Oh. Comic fam, that was a little bit of a, a blast from the past, as we like to say. We're coming back right now. Boom. Oh, the cat is here with us as well. I'm just so, glad there were subtitles. I had, that was yeah. a mess. <laughs> it was a, yeah, yeah. It was kind of hard. It was kind of hard to oh. hear. I hope the comic fam was able to enjoy that. Um, and if not, if you're listening to it, oh, don't have him do that, man. You got to kick him off. Oh. He's going gonna to be making noises on the mic. Poor Butch. Oh, poor Butchka. He's just, he wants attention, man. We've been on the mic for an hour and 41 minutes, comic fam. <laughs> Where are you getting this kind of comic book themed content? Where Anywhere. does the time go? Anywhere. Oh my god. But gosh. seriously, you guys should go check out that video. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad we made a video of one of my earliest cons. You know what? We uh, we have a lot of good uh, good experiences from that one particular situation. We learned a lot, but it was also a good example of, hey, these creators are people too. They right. want to chat about things they like. Just give them an opportunity to talk about stuff they like. So let's go through some tips and tricks for the con scene. Man, that was a that was a fun one though. I really enjoyed that time that we had uh, doing that. And shout out to Donny Cates for you know being a chill dude back then and wanting to be on the show. Only back then. Only back then. Not now. Not now. You don't want to be on. His, he's lost his chill. I don't know if he's lost his chill, but you don't want to be. He can still write a comic, which is all I need. Yeah, man, that's all we need, brother. That's all we need. Here we go. Um, this is from, um, actually, we can put these on the screen here. Put them up. We can put them on the screen. All right, we're talking um, recommendations by the comic community. All right, so the first thing that we're going to talk about here is from Beebs Collectibles. And what Beebs. does Beebs say? <laughs> it's the Beebs. The Beebs. Prepare your books ahead of time if you're getting them signed by an artist. That's right. This is a great Great suggestion. Thank you, Beeps, for um, leaving that there because the last thing you want to do is have that moment that you could have with the artist or writer and then spend it fumbling through, taking things out. Or I've had a book where I handed it, I just handed them the book with no indication whatsoever. Please sign here. Please use this color ink or whatever. 
they signed with a black pen on a very dark section of the book. You can barely even tell anything's there. Can't That's my it. fault. You know, I didn't hand them a certain pen. I didn't say, please sign right here. You can, you can very easily fix those before they happen. That's a good point, man. We're going to get into that. Actually, why don't we do that right now? Um, I have a really nice tip from aka mr bolo mr bolo mr bolo um you know him from ig and um oh you know what i thought i had him up here but i don't um he is um no 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 he is no 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 longer over there no no no. he is uh doing his own thing now and um we have a handful of really good tips from him um aka mr bolo over on instagram one of the things he said was, don't sleep on publisher tables and artist alley as a source for hot books. Creators sell their comps and publishers sometimes hold a small amount of stock for conventions. Great tip. This is one of those situations where I remember just back in the day, Merca and Duffel's table, for example, at that very convention, Teen Titans 12. Batman Who Laughs, she does the interior of that. The book was sold out. The book was spiking. It was spiking for like 20% of what it's worth now. And she had copies. She gets artist copies. She was selling them at her table Mm -hmm. for a very reasonable price, and anybody could have gotten it. So here we go. Um, We have another tip here that just needs to be read. Shout out AK Mr. Bolo. If looking in dollar boxes, don't sleep on the boxes on the floor. Now, don't like he's not talking about physically sleeping. Don't take a nap at Comic Con. No, did anybody say that? No one said that. That's a good advice. He's like, don't sleep on the floor. No, no, no. Um, Other people don't want to bend over and squat, making those boxes frequently less searched. I have never done that. I've seen them on the ground and I'm like, I'm not doing that. I don't want to get on the floor, a dirty, dirty con floor. You know what? I recommend if you're going to be hunting, which you should, you got to hit the con floor, especially if you go to a convention and I'm there, you can join me. You know, a lot of people like chatting with me on the con. That's cool. But I'm going to tell you, if you're, if you're chatting a lot, that's cool. We can keep the conversation going. Let's do it over some lawn boxes. All right. Let's hunt for some comics together. You know, less people like talking to me. Well, you haven't been to very many cons, right? That's true. Been COVID. Everyone's like, fire guy, right? Oh, hey, Tom. There you go. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I like anonymity. There we go. Well, you know what? You're able to secure things by searching for them. Look where other people aren't looking. Where they're not looking. On the exactly. Floor. All right. Here's another tip. Um, bundling up your purchase. Like if you grab more than one thing, you're likely will get a lower deal or get a better deal. Lower cost from a dealer. Buy more than one thing together at one time rather than just one comic and then hoping for a bartering session to happen. Right. I feel like you're more likely to haggle effectively if you bring a bunch of different comics and maybe negotiate a discount because you're buying multiple things. That makes sense. Exactly. Here's another one from the comic fam. Um, And it would be very, very simple, but very good. Just go. They're fun and your artists and vendors need you. That's another good way to look at it. Like, and that's from Compact Studios. Oh, Compact Studios. Shout out Tim Hyde. That's really cool. Um, we have a convention scene where a lot of dealers, writers, creators, and publishers spend a lot of money to be there just so that you can meet them in person. You know, will you be able to buy something and support them? Obviously, that's the goal. That's why they set up. They want you to support. I live in the city. So... You may be able to hear that as well. Some sirens. They're coming for us, Tom. Oh my gosh, run. Oh, it's my... Uh, Grab the gold. The duplicate. No. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> no, but, but really, that's good advice. Like, there have been, like, there's been cons going on my whole life. You, I, I, I drove you to Comic-Con one time before we started this channel. That's true. Because you knew I wasn't going. You were like, Ryan, if you're not going to go, can you drop me off at the con? Because parking is a nightmare, it's which true. is a whole other tip. Get someone to drop you off because parking sucks. I drove you there. I could have gone. I was just like, yeah, I don't want to. That's the whole thing. It costs money. It's hot and sweaty. I just, I would rather stay home. There you go. But that's bad. That's bad advice. Go to the con. Yeah, for the very least, like, give it a shot and then support the industry that you are actively part of. If you like enjoy. comics, there's a good chance that some creator you know will be there, and it's a good opportunity to meet some people. All right, here we got another one. Um, Collector Kev zero seven. Get there early to avoid those long signing lines. I waited five hours for Stanley. Oof. Worth it. That's true. You can't do that anymore, unfortunately. Unfortunately not. And this is one of those things where it's like, it's a great tip. You will have better luck getting through stuff faster on a Thursday or Friday if the convention's 
starts on Thursday or Friday, then you will on a Saturday or Sunday. That's when all the people go. Everyone goes Saturday or Sunday. Right. So um, great, great suggestion. Try to get there early if possible. That way you're going to save your time and not have to wait in line too much. Okay. Here's another one from the comic firm. All right. Um, now when chatting with... Uh, Gem Mint. It's your boy, Gem Mint. I was like, yo, Fire Guy Ryan had kind of a little moment where he got nervous. I have never really had a, every Every time I've met a creator, it's always like, oh, I'm there. Hi. Because you need more experience, Ryan. I, no matter how much experience I get, I get, I'm ner- I'm shy. I'm a nervous guy. It's that's safe right. in here in this room. It's just you and me and 172 people watching us live right now. So that's like, oh. but you know, n- none of you, I think, are common creators. <laughs> Who have made a book that I love, but now see now I'm getting nervous. He's getting nervous just talking about it. What if about Philip Kennedy Johnson, writer of Alien, is in the chat right now? You know, I don't know. You never know, brother. Please sign my book you know, <laughs> someday. You may not know. In a visible color, in a nice location. So this is what Jemin said. He said, "When I meet a creator, I usually try to compliment them on their work that I like." Right. Right. That's the, Give very, them a compliment. the bare minimum. I think that's what you should do. You know what? When you when I chatted with Donny Cates, like this, this there's something that you don't see in the video that we just played for you. Mm-hmm. That we were com- we were commenting about how excited we were that he was going to take on absolute carnage. Right. He had the shirt on. He was repping carnage. The red the red hoodie. It was like br- like we just found out. Right. I think it was like that day. This was spring 2019, and absolute carnage was in the summer of 2019. So it was like probably just announced, and that's why he was rocking the hoodie. Yep. He was doing Venom at the time. That, it was uh, Maximum Carnage. It was, right? I mean, it was Maximum Carnage. It was really cool, too. So what we but told him was... But he showed us on his phone. Is that what you're, that's what you're talking I'm going, about? That's where I'm okay. going. That's where I'm okay. going with it, Ryan. I'm sorry, Tom. All right. So what happened was we commented about how his artist choices were just... They were they were just fantastic. They were He's superb. worked with some good people. And he said, oh, you're excited about absol- You're excited about me taking on Carnage? Let me tell you about me taking on Silver Surfer. And that's what I felt. I was like, wait, what? He just spilled the beans. We and no then idea. we know we had no idea. We're like, you're doing Silver Surfer? We're talking about Silver Surfer Black comic fam. We're going way back in time, right? Read that one. Read it. By the way. And you know what he told us? Ryan knows because he was there. Ryan started the fire. He says, oh, the art. Trad the, more. Trad Freaking more. I'm such a noob. That, I, didn't, I had no idea who Trad Moore was. That's, that remains the only Trad Moore book I have ever read. And he showed us some rough pencils on his phone. He pulls his phone out. Yeah. He's like, you guys got to check out this art. You got to look at this. And I, honestly, I could not even tell what I was looking at. It was no, there was no color. If you've read Silver Surfer Black, you know that it is a trippy visual masterpiece. But uncolored, that book is hard to tell what you're looking at. It's a lot of... Wavy lines and, and weird, trippy space stuff. All I knew is that we were in for a wild ride. Correct. And that whole conversation, he didn't know our channel. No. This is before, this is like. Unlike now, he watches and comments regularly. Oh, he's all over the he's channel. He's our favorite. Come on. Yeah. No, no. I mean, he don't watch us. But what we do know is that back then, he was training us like just any other fan. He just like anybody who liked his work. And he showed us. Kind of behind the scenes stuff. And that's what happens sometimes. As AKA Mr. Bolo said, don't sleep on the panels. Creators give info often not available to the public. The Bitterroot creators told a panel I was in about a year. Oh, I got my The Bitterroot creators told a panel I was in about their option news almost a year before it went public. These creators will share things with the fans. They're excited to share information with you, you know, and they'll be light about like spoilers and leaks. They're not going to get in trouble, but still you may find out maybe a little bit of what's coming. You know, something you get excited about. Plus what do you panels are just fun. Panels are a lot of fun. I've only done one, but I need, I need to, I need to look at more panels. Okay, here we go. Um, this is another fun one here that I would love to chat about for a little, a brief amount of time. We have a Funtin D66. Do you think it's a good idea to have a creator of a book sign that book? Great question. Better than having somebody who didn't work on the book sign the book. Since we talked about Donny Cates a couple times, I've had him sign books he didn't do. Weird. Well, I had him sign books that he spiked. I thought it would be funny. I had him sign the Rune book where Venom gets wings because he made that happen. And the the first uh, Ciderac Doctor Strange book because it's Strange 44 where... 
Siderak is introduced, right? Because he was making that a thing again. So that was fun. But yes, traditionally have them sign a book that they did. And I think that's an awesome thing to do. Keep in mind, if you're doing it for collectible and reselling purposes, get a witness. Best to get a witness. I I got so many. I was thinking about getting a slab, you know, getting my book slabbed and getting them signature certified or whatever. And I did not know that you had to have a fancy pants official CGC representative witnessing the signature happen to prove that it was not just you practicing a signature over and over. (laughs) Like Ryan Hotley's signature just says Ryan. Yeah, that's it. And I've written that name a lot because that's my name. And I feel like with enough practice. I could, I could maybe copy Ryan Hutley's signature. But you would never do that because that would be unethical, Ryan. It would, and I would screw it up. Yeah, and you're... you're I could write Ryan on a bunch of my comics. There you go. <laughs> Just Ryan. Just Fire Guy Ryan. Fire Guy Ryan, what's up? Um, so, uh, considering that, I would say there's a handful of reasons why I like a uh, creator signing a book. If it's a raw book, it's totally cool. It will likely not add to its value unless it's a cheaper book and you have a signature on it. One example is Mignola will do free signatures. He's all about hooking up members of his community with free signatures. Typically, if actually, you know, he always does this now. He always has like a donation jar right. for some organization. So you can feel good about donating something, but then you get some comics signed and it's cool. And you, there's a lot of cheap Mignola covers and you can get something signed by Mignola. That's awesome. Sometimes an artist or a creator will ask if they want to sign your name on it. Now for resale purposes, Kills the value. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you're trying to resell it. If you're trying to resell it. It's something that sometimes in the moment I'll say, make it out to me. I will do that. I will keep this book forever. Because that will force me to keep the book forever. I have some art, original art that's like, you know, you get the bug, man. You get you get excited about something. You want to upgrade. You want to, you want to get a key book or something like that. But then it's like, you know what? Some things belong in the PC. Let it stay in the PC. I have an Andy Seriano Hellboy sketch. And he asked me in that moment, if I make it out to Tom? And I, I couldn't, like, in that moment no, be I'm like, gonna sell it I later. may sell this one day. <laughs> yeah. I was like in, in, my, like, in my stomach, I just had such a great experience about it. And I'm like, you know what? Make it out to me. Yeah, Tom. So, like, it's, it's up to you, you know, to each their own. But there is an aspect of personalization that, I don't know, man. It does something for the PC that makes it special. You remember that time and... I don't know. I don't know if that helps. It depends. You know, it's you know? very it's very personal whether or not you want to get a book signed or not. Okay, here we go. We got another comment here. Uh, bring cash money. This is from Logan Schweigert. Schweigert. It's a cool name. Bring some cash money. Cash money. It helps so much when you're buying a big book. Now, there's a, a couple of reasons I would recommend bringing cash. Yeah, cash ca- cash goes a long way. Dealers will be. Very happy with you. Not a lot of people, I, I don't know, because I've never used a card, but I imagine not a lot of people are ready with those old square reader things to like process credit card payments. Right. That might, that might <laughs> maybe I would be more willing to foolishly overspend on a stupid book with, you know, I can use my credit card and I'll right. pay it in 30 years, whatever. But I found when I went to this con last weekend, I hit up the ATM on the way and I took out like $120. And that was it. Like I, I told myself, I, this is it. If I spend this money, that's it. I'm done. I'm not, that's my budget. Sure. So that kind of helps you set, you know, your your limit. That, that was my thought process. I anyway. like that. That's a good and way to, to give you a cap. Know what your limit is. Also, bring somebody who's willing to buy you <laughs> big boy books for you. <laughs> you don't have to spend your money. There you go. That's a whole nother story. Helping you out, my brother. Got to get you some cool books, man. Thanks. You know how I love you, brother. All right. So, um, yeah, cash money does go a long way. It'll help you on bartering, like, you know, just working out deals. And you'll be, you'll be grateful that you do. Um, especially because the ATM fees and things like that. Right. So um, highly recommended. Okay, what's this right here? Um, I have, oh my gosh, Reggie from Reggie Collects. I freaking love this dude. Reggie, I love him, but also he scares me so much. He scares you? He's so scary. Why does Reggie scare you? Because he, like, he's so, like like we were saying before, he's so confident and suave, you know? He's and such I'm, a, I'm, I'm such dude, a shy you guy. Know what, who, like, you want to know something about Reggie? Huh. That dude's a man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a weird thing to say, but nobody in the chat's going to be like, uh, everyone knows what I'm talking about. He's a family man. You know, he's successful. He's got a big boy job. He's a father. He's ripped to shit. He's just ripped to (laughs) shit, dude. He's just... I mean, he's got this like personality, you know, when he's talking on a stream or on a video, he's just so him, like happy and earnest and engaging. And I just like, eh. I've never done a live stream with Reggie. I don't think I have anyway. You got it, comic fam. You gotta follow Reggie. Collects. Reggie collects with one G. 
That's right. That's an important thing to clarify. Yeah, it's Reggie Collects with 1G, and um, he's been a solid member of the comic fam for such a long time, a friend of mine for years now, and he provides such just authentic and good-hearted content. He cares about the community. Like, he really cares about the community, and a lot of people do. There's a lot of members in our community that are really good friends of us. We got Jim Mint on the line. You it's know. your boy, Jim Mint. Of course, we got Bueller. We got Very Gary. We, know, we love all these guys. Reggie is one of them, and you should go follow him. And he gave some very good tips. So here we go. Let me read you some things that Reggie said. Um, when you're meeting an artist, you know, because, again, we want to want to give you guys something to talk about, an artist or a writer, okay, think about your question or questions ahead of time. Organize them in your mind so that it's the most important. So the most important is asked first. After asking your question, listen to the answer. Be in the moment. Put another way, don't be overwhelmed with everything that's going on so you miss the experience. This right here is the most, like one of the most astute observations that he just laid out perfectly because that's what Reggie does. He's good at that. But... Yeah, I've been there where I'm like, I'm going to ask him three things, four things. And I'm just like, I said it. You're thinking about number two thing to ask him. You're not yeah. listening to the response to number one. Yes. You're missing the whole thing because you're caught up in your head trying to like organize yourself because you didn't do it while you were waiting in line for 20 minutes. Exactly. And that's exactly what you want to avoid. You want to enjoy the moment that you have. You just waited in line for that time. You may get something good. You may... It may springboard another question that you weren't even expecting to ask. You know what I'm saying? Maybe put your phone down while you're waiting in line and, and you know, do what Reggie's saying and process your thoughts and kind of formulate some stuff. Think about what you're going to say so you don't go out there and pull a fire guy Ryan and just blah, books. Right. I, lo- I also love this, uh, this as side note here that he provided. He said when you're buying a comic book, especially a raw book, he said take out the book, out, take the book out of the plastic, ask first. <laughs> yeah. Gotta ask. But take the book out and give it a dirty grade. A dirty grade, he so said. He said, that's the quote, dirty grade. Like, like, give it an actual grade. Like, make sure to grade your comics that you're buying. You know, take a look at them. Um, don't be afraid to negotiate. That's another tip there. I really like that one. It's okay to walk away if the deal doesn't make sense. Don't catch a brick, all right? Be prepared with various forms of payment, cash, uh, PayPal, et cetera. And shop around for deals versus buying the first book you see. You All know, very... He's got such a clear way of, of saying such good advice. I feel like he should have a YouTube channel or something where he talks about comics to people and, like, explains some of this stuff, you know? Or, it's literally what Reggie does, man. He goes on the line and oh, just right. He chatting. does have a YouTube channel. Reggie Collects. Yeah. You know what else he does? What else he has? He's got a foil variant. Oh, my gosh. Okay, comic fam. You know that... You know, of course, you know, we, we, we do comics here. A lot of our, our, our homies in the community, you know, Bueller and Very Gary and Jem Mint, we all have stuff to offer to hook the community up, trying to get you guys value, but in ways that you can support what we do. This right here is a 500 print foil comic book that Reggie foil. is releasing. It's on pre-sale. And you know, I'm going to hype this book and chat about it. Because he's my homie. It's a moment of pride. I'm you know? very proud of him, man. Yeah. You know what? It's a foil book. It's a. It's called Slow City Blue, number one. It's the Reggie Collects Fence variant, limited to 500, available at reggiecollects.com. Books are expected in September. The cover is by Patrick Olifi. And the narrative actually is like going to put this on our show eventually. You know, this is a, uh, a narrative that takes place in the mind of this person, in a world that is made up in his head. After something tragic happens, after an infliction that he put upon himself. Oh my gosh. ReggieCollects.com. Support a fellow member. If you're if you're a fan of Reggie, I mean you're you're already gonna be getting it. But I also want to showcase this book for anybody here who's interested in it. Um, you know, we're we're good friend we're good friends as well as fans of, of what he does. And he provides so much value that he deserves some time on the mic. So shout out Reggie. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, what is this one? Okay, this one right here. Uh, this is a question that someone asks when they see a creator. Terry JSA, do you charge for signatures is my number one question when meeting creators. This is one of those. That is something to consider. It's hard to ask that kind of question. You know what? Don't be shy to yeah. ask. 
especially because this is definitely one of those polarizing situations in the community because there's a lot of people who don't believe they should have to pay for signatures. I am of the opinion that you should char- that you should charge for signatures, but it should be very clear what the situation is. Put up a sign, you mean? Like let people know while they're in line? So yeah. You don't spend all time all your day waiting in line and be like, oh, I charge $20 a book or something. Yeah, I mean, there was a, you know, and okay, so one thing here that I'll say that really bugs me. Okay, I, I don't think, I think it's fine. If someone says, hey, it's a, you know, Fiona Staples, for example. Ooh, I love Fiona Staples. She's like one of my favorite artists of all time, my brother. Just off Saga alone. Off Saga alone, that's all I need. We have, um, and when I went into her line, you know, did, did the whole thing. It was like, she'll sign three comics for free. And then everyone after that was $5. Okay. okay. To give you some perspective of pricing here, comic fam. Now, we're about to go into a post-COVID world here. These people haven't been to conventions in years. Yeah. If they want to charge true. more than five bucks, pay it. If you, if you can afford it. Yeah. Surprise, conventions are expensive. It costs 60 to to $100 to get in for the day. And then you're going to pay for food. And then you're going to want to buy stuff. So you know what? If an artist wants five or 10 bucks, pay the artist. They also have to pay to set up there, don't they? Don't yeah. They? Okay. I didn't know that part because I've never done it, but I believe you have to pay money to have a space at a convention as a creator or a vendor of any kind. Absolutely. You know, so I, I feel like it's like nothing wrong. Now, I have been in lines with people who said, yeah, it's free signature or it's $5 a signature. Unless you're getting something graded, then it's $20. <laughs> Go sleep outside. Go wash your face. I do not like that. I'm looking for, I'm thinking of like, Are those go, things people say? I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. What are, what are things people say? Go wash your face, apparently. I don't know. That's good advice. I don't know. Like, what, what, what's, I'm trying to think of something mean to say that isn't mean, but you know. Oh. Like, like, I don't know. You lost me. Go eat some crayons. Yeah. You know, uh, you? In, uh, insert insert weird term that I'm trying to think of here. We've got for on. two hours. Moving on, Tom. I know, we're moving <laughs> on. Officially I mean, like, mind. for real, though, like, uh, what is that? We're mm. going to grade a comic book, so now you're going to charge me more? No. That's hogwash. All right? That's garbage. Yeah. This is trash. That's what it is. There you go. All right? Now, charge for signatures. But if you're going to ask me what I'm going to freaking do with it, because I'm going to grade it. You don't know what I'm going to do with them. I put that on my wall. I may put it up on the freaking set and have people see it on every video. You don't know what people are going to do with these comic books. Exactly. You know, just because you're paying more money to get a signature graded doesn't mean that you should have to pay more money for the damn signature. Charge for the signature that you're giving and be happy with that. That's what I, that's the only critique that I'll give that's that I've, I've experienced. Cause that, that bugs me, man. That really bugs me, but kick rocks. Thank you. That's, that's the term I was thinking of. Kick some rocks. Okay. But We have, um, you know, creators that don't charge for signatures. Mignola doesn't charge. No, he does not. Matt Wagner. Took advantage of that a little bit. (laughs) Dude, he doesn't. Dude, I had him sign so many Alpha Flight comic books. Oh, that was my first con. It was good. It was good. Um, You know who else doesn't charge? Adam Hughes. Oh, God. Don't get me started. Adam Hughes doesn't charge. He also doesn't give you much time. To oh, no, nor does interact. he make eye contact or be nice. At least the one time I met, he was the very first creator I ever met at a con. So of course, you know, I I didn't say anything. I was. I don't think you would have gotten anything from him. Okay, so it wasn't me. He wasn't like oh, this guy's weird. I'm just gonna not. Oh, I met him. Adam Hughes like three times, and every single time he didn't like look at me. He was a grumpy Gus. He wasn't, he wasn't grumpy. He's probably just like doing his thing, man. He does cons. He does a lot of signatures. Everyone wants a signature from him. He does a quick A H exclamation mark. I do like his signature though. He's got a great signature. Ah. But you know? what I'm saying is, is that there are creators like Matt Wagner, Grendel. Of course. Okay, come on. He doesn't charge. And he'll tell you in person, oh, I made that decision a long time ago. It's a, it's a, it's a personal thing. Oh, dropping my water. So there are creators like Matt Wagner who won't not charge you for a sketch. That's cool. How cool is that? I would imagine that kind of thing you'd have to pay extra for. Or Absolutely. Pay oh, yeah. You would expect to pay stuff for. But Matt Wagner's like, no, no, no I'll do it for free, man. Because you're my, you're my fan. So what I'm, show, what I'm showing the community there's here is like, there's a range of, of creators. And some of them are legends, right? And those legends, they're going to do what they want to do. They're successful in their own right. We also have new creators that need to make money. They need to do, they're doing this for a reason. 
support them. If they give you free signatures and they have stuff out on the table, buy something, you know? Don't take advantage. It's a nice gesture. But it's a nice gesture, okay? But also, give some cred where credit's due because if Matt Wagner does a sketch for you for free, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. You don't have to do that. Yeah, that's nice. That's really cool, right? Okay. Um, who else? Who else we got? Who else we got? I don't think that's our... Oh, you know what? That wasn't it, was it? Was that it? I don't think so. We're going to keep it going. Ryan, we're going to keep it going. That's good. Because I don't feel like we've been on, on the air for long enough. We've only been going for two hours, man. Yeah, it's nothing. It's, not, it's just nothing, man. We've we got, we got to keep it going. Okay, so this is from Very Gary. Oh, hey. We know Very Gary, right? We He's do. a homie. He read Thor with us. He did. He did read Thor. we got to get him back on the mic. Comment fam, do you want to see any of these members back on the mic? Because they're my homies. And when you're chilling with your homies. It's like every day. Every day. You do just that. To a convention, when you go to a convention, Very Gary says, go with a list of what you want in Ooh, hand. I like that. Or on your phone. Walking into a convention can be very overwhelming. It's easy to get distracted and miss out on the books you're targeting. Now, I will agree with Gary to one extent, but I'll also disagree on another extent. But I agree with him, really. It's, it's the bottom line. Sure. So go in there with what you want. If you want to get a trade, you want to get something special, you want to get go get an exclusive, yeah, you got to be on it. You got to go right to those tables. You got to go there when it's going to happen. If you want something at the Valiant table, you got to go to the Valiant table at the right time. Have an order listed of what you are trying to target. But at the same time, also have the flexibility of being inspired on the con floor and getting something you didn't know that you were planning on getting, that you, that you wouldn't know to get. Right. You know, they wouldn't plan to get. You can't say like, nope, can't do that. I got my schedule. I got to stick to my schedule. Got to get that schedule done. No. Now, I agree with him because there is a lot of things that you want to accomplish at a convention. If you don't have any plan at all, you can go in and get overwhelmed. So oh, it's good yeah. to have a, a, a plan of attack. Know your writers and artists that you want to see. Right. Get that program guide. Figure out where they are on the floor so you know where to go and what, what to prioritize. Try to figure out when they're going to be there. How do you do that? Dude. I can tell you what you don't do. You don't walk to their booth every time. Dude, you know how large of a floor San Diego Comic-Con is? No. You're walking like 20 minutes back and forth because there's so many people. And you're like, oh, wait, is Mignola there? No, he's not there. So you go to the other side. And you're like, where's Ryan Otley? Oh, no. He's, he's going to be there in 10, 15 minutes. Okay, well, who's around me? Where's Al Baltazar? Oh, he's on the indie section? Oh, okay, let me go see where he's at. Dude, you'll be walking the whole freaking they floor. They give you a map. They give you a map. Read and it. here's the kicker. If these people are there, they have a Twitter. They have an Instagram. They're going to tell you via social when they're going to be there. Don't waste your time just showing up I at wasted random. my time. I brought a bunch of die comics at my last con. I think it was that 2019 Emerald City. I brought some die books because Kieran Gillen was there. And every day, we went for multiple days, and I passed his booth multiple times <laughs> every day that I was there. I never saw him once. I don't know. If he, <laughs> he had a table there with his, with his name on it, so he was there at some point. I just never saw the man. Doing I, panels and stuff. Never got know? him signed. I wanted my die books signed. You got to literally go on to their I did not social. do that, and that probably would have saved my die books from being unsigned forever. That's what you got to do, man. You got to plan it out. Now, I'm going to give you a tip from the guru. This is something that he sent on the mic a few the times. The golden age guru. The golden age Jeff. guru. Jeff. The master of the big boy books. Jeff Itkin. This guy. Overstreet Prize Guide Advisor. Brilliant mind. Funny video creator on Instagram, by the way. If you're not following the guru on Instagram, you're missing out. This dude, a lot of, just lot did, of dad joke kind of stuff, but it's good. It's good dad it's good, jokes. Yeah, he's he's worth a follow up, duh, because he's part of this crew. So we have a claim sale that we're doing over on his uh, Instagram. We do it every month. We go live for hours. He goes even longer than I go on, and he does ads for it essentially. They're you know? silly, but they're silly ads. He edits himself and stu doing stuff, and he was doing dad stuff this week. At a water park. Oh, man. That sounded like it was a billion degrees here, and that would have been great. That was a good idea to go to a water park. Yeah, he took his kids to the water park. You know, they're having fun over there, you know, doing the pool stuff, doing he's the slide stuff. He's shooting a promo on a water slide. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like going down the water slide talking about his claims. Claims out. Be there. There's claims out coming. So that was really fun. But this is something that uh, the guru said on the mic on the podcast um, 
I think it was the last podcast we did, uh, podcast number 42, where we talk about seller's regret and, oh my gosh, the pain still hurts. Make sure to follow that. Make sure to watch that, that podcast and listen to it. SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. And he mentioned that when he goes to a con, he doesn't go to conventions with anything in particular in mind that he's going to buy. Now, granted, he's buying stuff that a lot of us would never buy. Yeah. He's one of those major extreme collectors and dealers. There's a reason why he's on the show. This dude is very knowledgeable. We're lucky to have him on the show. So, so it's a tip from him that when he goes, he's going to see anything and everything. Kind of the opposite of, of what Very Gary said. Which is why I said I agree with Very Gary, but I also look at it in a different way too. Jeff is like a, like a guru, if you will. Like he's got a Zen kind yes. of Jedi approach. Exactly. Just go calm and go let whatever calm. happens happen. Go with the waves. Feel the force. Right. Feel it in the room. Massage the air. That book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just go for it. Uh, that book. <laughs> Gonna go that way. Just and buy that's how books the guru does it. with your eyes closed. Just figure it out. Yeah. So bottom line is have some flexibility. But as Very Gary says, if you're brand new, yeah, go in there with a freaking game plan. Save your time. Jeff has been to like every con ever, so he knows what he's doing. <laughs> every con ever. And yeah, if you're new, plan it a little bit first. Oh my goodness, comic fam. This is what we do here on the comic on the bags and boards show. You know what we forgot? What do we forget? Super chats. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, here we go. Thank you for reminding me, Ryan. You're welcome. Uh, Before we forgot again. Oh my gosh, we almost forgot. I want to give a big thank you to members who are doing something they don't have to, but we do uh, a lot of giveaways. We do secure comic books for the fam. We buy you things and we appreciate you. So I just want to give a big shout out to some members from the last live show who did Super Chats. If you are doing Super Chats while we are live today, don't worry. We're not missing it. We're going to give you a shout out on the next live show. Pizza Comic. Uh, Plaza Comics. Pizza Comics. Pizza, Pizza Comics. Delicious. Though. Woody's Comics. Che- Woody's Comic Chest. Saturday Night Comics. Calton's Comics. Katian? Katian? Katian's Issues. Oh, two thank you for chats. two super chats yeah. there. Um, here, can you read the rest? That's uh, Vika underscore CG, a.k.a. Closet Geek. He's been around for quite a while. Nathan Martinez and some nobody guy called Comics of Bueller. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. Yeah. But we appreciate all of you. Thank you for uh, donating to the cause. It makes us so we can do more giveaways. Speaking of We got one which, left. We got one left. And it's going to go to... Do you see any? Let's say some hi to members of the chat here. Johnny Boy is over here. I like the, uh, I don't even know, man. I, I like know. when like, sucky wrestlers want to charge for picks. Like, nah, Hacksaw, I'm good. <laughs> is that a real wrestler? Is that, that is the guy from Spider-Man? He's not sucky, though, man. Like, these are all know, people hustling. I don't know dude, wrestlers. All, dude, here's the thing, man. This is what he does. After and, you know, a certain point, you, know, you can't wrestle anymore, so you got to go to. You got to do it. Yeah, like, don't cons. judge, man. The Mighty from Power Rangers crew. That's true. You they're all cool doing people. it, too. You know what? If Yeah, it's like, and I, I understand that. I understand the, the funniness of it, but, you know, for real, though. You got you gotta you gotta pay your dues right. to get the picture. That's how it goes. You gotta support all the members. But here we go. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, we're looking for amazing. What did I say? Murphinator. Amazing Murphinator. You stopped in at a great time. Amazing Murphinator, you just won. You make me write the longest names. I'm making you write them out, comic fan. I think that's how you're picking these. You got to just do it. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's Ryan's phone going off. Oh, my goodness. That's my, the show's over. The show's oh. over phone. Oh, my gosh, comic fam. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you want to know a way that you can support what we do, I want to sh- direct you to comictom101.com. This is the last uh, plug that we're going to give for you here. We're doing some crazy stuff this month. We have our boys, number one from 2006, going in every single box. Ben Temple Smith Homelander exclusive. What is up? We also have going in many boxes. We don't know if it's one per yet. So, you know, it is what it is. We're going to definitely hook you up with something else. You'll probably get both of the boys' variants or you'll get something else. You know, we're going to make sure that the value is there for everyone. But we're doing our best to get you each one of these $10 MSRPs, Marvel Voices, number one, Pride Issues. It is our very, very talented artist, Edge, doing an America Chavez cover. And I feel like I say this every month, but a lot of these, I don't feel, I don't feel that into it until I look at it in my hands and I'm like, this pops. Like, I really, I saw, I worked at the shop when this Pride book came out and 
when Marvel likes to put out a lot of variants for some of these books. It's true. And I don't, I'm not just saying it, but this is my favorite variant that I have seen for this comic. Hot damn, dude. It's I pretty. appreciate that, man. A lot of effort went into this. The colors are fantastic. You know what? Of all the sketches that she provided, you know, I mean, it means a lot to me to take America Chavez to press. Like, I friggin' love the character. Um, and this was a very important book for us. We did uh, Marvel's Voices in we had a, February. A Luke Cage cover? Luke Cage cover. Right. Okay. All right. The we She did, Hulk. We did Women of Marvel. We did Women of Marvel. And you know, a $10 MSRP on a variant is very expensive to do. And that was not going to deter us from bringing this book to press. We figured it out. We did it. And uh, it's a lot of value in here. There's new art, but there's also reprints of old stuff in here too. We got Alpha Flight 106, the pages in here too. This is a very important book to me to do. And I'm excited to uh, bring this one to our members. And this isn't the only thing that we're doing this month. Take a look at the uh, big books that we have going out. We have a boys number one, CGC 9.8 going out. We have a Marvel team up number one. That's right. Uh, we have the Spider-Man and Human Torch cover and First Parents of Misty Night. We have Strange Tales 101 going out. We have Amazing Spider-Man 361 going out. These are all going out to members. Very excited about that. Also, we have... Do we have it on here? Let's see. Oh, you can kind of see it back here. But Claire and the Dragons. Yeah. It's kind of hiding back there. But this is the first month that we will be doing a guaranteed second exclusive in every box. Okay. We guarantee one exclusive. We do our best to get a second exclusive in every box, at least routinely. But going forward, there will be a guarantee of two in every box because we are doing an exclusive that is okay for the whole family. That's right. Claire and the Dragons. It's a homage to a Dr. Seuss issue, uh, Return to Dr. Seuss. And it's a, a, a book that's going to be good for anyone in the home. What surprises me, as I am uh, not a child, I'm a grown man with no children in my life, <laughs> uh, no kids. And I'm surprised at how much demand there was for a, a child's something in the mail call. Like something you could open with your kids, something you could experience with your children. There's a lot of kids that are doing this with their parents. We see yeah. unboxings of kids. Shout out Noah. Yeah, shout out Noah. But here's the thing, man. We're looking at a freaking boys the number boys. one. Yeah, some of these are not kid friendly. It literally says mature readers on it. Our box is for adults, okay? We have to be very clear about that. We send yes. out Walking Dead. We, we try to make it as tasteful as possible. We We're not take sending out, out books like... Erotic covers from Boom. Correct. You know, we're, we're, we're avoiding those types no of things. No Faithless is going in Yeah, Faithless. Boxes. Even though Boom has sent us Faithless to do things with, I don't know why they sent us Faithless, but I got a box of Faithless from them, and I'm like, I don't, I can't. Is that, is that a Boom book? I don't even know who does it. It's faithless. a Boom. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, not, Brian not, Azzarello. Yeah, not appropriate for everyone to read. Dude, it's an awesome book. I, I'm it's sure. very naughty. It's naughty. Yes. Very naughty. But you know what? Um, the thing is, though, there's a lot of parents who subscribed to the mystery mail call. Right. And they are looking for ways to get other family members into it. And you know what? If the mail call is, excuse me, if the mail call is something in the month that you find enjoyment and it's even slightly getting your kids excited about comic books. Worth it. It's worth it for us to bring a comic to press that's going to be for them as well. Got to make sure One the, book. the hobby exists in the future by new readers is a big part of that. Investing in the next generation of comic collectors and readers. Thank you. That's you what said we're that doing. Much better than I did. It's it's dude. It's the truth behind it. And what we're gonna do is we're bringing three thousand of these to press. What we're gonna do is make sure that the nicest copies, the mintiest, fresh copies, it's your boy Jim Mint, are going in a bag and board because as it should be, if you're gonna give this to your kid, it's gonna be bag and boarded. I'm actually going to go do that after we go off the air. I'm going to go prep these books for the mail call. So what we're going to do, we don't have that many members. So what we're doing is we're over-ordering so that we can get the nicest copies to our members. Correct. And then we're going to release a print count after the fact because it is an exclusive. It's a it's a homage that we have specially made for the mystery mail call. And what doesn't sell, we are going to donate. Cool. So know that when they do get donated, you know, when we... When we, when we do this process, um, we're going to have a process to mark them so that they're not, you know, these are mail call exclusives. So we don't want them sold in the aftermarket outside of the box. So what we're going to do is do like a stamp or something on there. And then we do a donation and it'll just be like not for resale. But that way. I'll end up doing that, huh? Stamping all yeah, these. That's, yeah, that's, that's going to be me. That's, that's gonna, okay. That's, that's going to be It's my job now. It's how it's going to, it's just what's yep. going to happen, man. But just so you know that there is going to be a 
print count that will be published because this is an exclusive. We want to make sure that the collectible is exciting for your kids too. You know, I'm trying to hit all the different checkboxes here of enjoyment. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe, maybe you'll like you it know, too. Some kid stuff is kind of fun sometimes. Absolutely. X babies. I really want to do an ice cream and homage on a kid's book. Oh, that's how freaking cool that's not be? a good idea. That's not a kid's book at all. No, that no, no, no. I want to do an homage though. So it'll be like Claire and the Dragons or something like that, but it'll look like, look like an ice cream man book, but it's a kid's book. I'm so confused. Like I with know. the sideways mouth. And the <laughs> no, no, no. For no. kids. Not like that. Not like crazy horror or something, uh. but like something fun, you know, maybe a clown or something. I don't know. But like, obviously, you know what's coming? It's Dr. Seuss. It's uh, Goosebumps. Animorphs is on my mind. I want to do some of that. Maybe we can do um, like uh, Where the Monsters Wow. Where the wild things are. Where the wild things are. Thank there you. You, you know, that would be a really cool book to do as well. Um, obviously, we got Dr. Seuss, one's locked and loaded. It's going to be really cool. So um, we're going to have fun with it is what I'm saying. But know this. Investing in the next gen means not just reading comics throughout the mail call. Whatever we have left over, we will donate. And those donations mean that by joining the mystery mail call, you are also getting comics out there to kids. We are printing 3,000 kids' comics. We intend to get 3,000 kids' comics, fresh comics, new comics, issue number ones, out so that kids can read them every damn month. And I'm very proud of that. You know? Me too. That's cool to hear. That's I a lot of comic books. I didn't know the donation thing. Oh, yeah. You know, like, That's cool. you know, there's there's different ways that we can distribute these. And um, the main thing is we have to have a process to respect the collectible, respect the milk call fam, and also make sure the print counts and the quality is there for our members who are supporting us and investing in this process. But side note, if we have a few hundred left over, absolutely, we're going to get them in the hands of children as, you know, per the right way. So know that's coming, but also know that. Hey, we're very excited. We're bringing 3,000 kids' comic books to press every damn month because of this community. Feels good. It feels good. It feels good. But not just that. We couldn't do it without Scout Comics, without Scoot Comics making that possible, as well as an update to the mail call as of today with These the announcement. Fun. We have gra digital graphic novels with a, seven, a 699 MSRP going in every single box starting in July with an exclusive comic tom exclusive card that 500 members are going to get we are trying to grow the value every single month trying to bring the heat bring in the heat to the comic fam and i'm going to leave you with this we teamed up with cbcs this month okay golden tickets are coming that's all i gotta say comic fam you listen to the bags and boards show we appreciate you we'll see you very soon good night everyone good night thanks for being here Goodbye from down here in our corners. The trick is you got to end the stream a little bit later because it's going to cut it off on YouTube. That's how it works. I don't know how any of this works. I'm just here. I think that was a pretty all right show.